All of the content of Patriots Unfiltered may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The world's original podcast. Welcome to Patriots Unfiltered. I need a party ready dining set. Storage, you know, it's got like built in trash and he's got a little like a wine, built in you know, a little wine fridge maybe. And, oh, you know, man. like just the whole thing, like wine ready fridge. to party. Yeah. Well, for beers. Too. No, and I'm thinking to myself, I can help him. I was talking you need about like wine a party. Fridges. I take any of the top five quarterbacks over what we've dealt with since Brady. And I'll scream if we don't take Daniels, if May is gone at three. Okay. I, I'll just stop talking then. You know, Mike likes Jaden Daniels. I like Jaden Daniels too. I'm with Mike, yeah. but that doesn't mean that like you're wrong. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, guys. And he's too nice to just say, yeah, I, I don't buy him. He like, sucks. And he just he, doesn't like the squinting. The squinting. No, yeah. because Mike is not sold on Jaden Daniels. All you're doing <laughs> is repeating what everyone else is saying. Right, right. Well, but you're doing it while you're eating a lemon and squinting. Right, yeah. he's squinting. I understand why you would think that he's not a good prospect, <laughs> Evan, because you don't know like I know. See, this is how people think I say. Yeah. Email said I went to Northeast. And Paul's saying, I don't care that he went to Northeastern. I still don't care about PFF stats. <laughs> you know how I usually say I never said that? Yeah. I am quite sure, sure that I said exactly those words. <laughs> so every ball that each team has, you know, the, that the big ball bag, here, here it's infamous. <laughs> this is Patriots Unfiltered. Presented by Toyota's official website for deals, buyatoyota.com. All right, welcome to Patriots Unfiltered. It is to, uh, Thursday here at Gillette Wait, Stadium. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> 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 I can't listening to this guy. I'm, you know, I'm if it was draft week, I would say, okay, okay. I, I need to fine. go to sleep and then wake <laughs> up and start this whole day over. I swear to God. <laughs> I had this whole thing in my mind that it was Thursday. We're a week away from the draft. I, I, wow. What's happening to me, Paul? I ask you because Cause you're right with me. Because we're the old. Right. Yes. Okay. It's Tuesday here at Gillette Stadium, <laughs> and we're a week and two days away from the draft. Nine days. Yeah. Nine days away. <laughs> he couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. And it's Tamara. It's Evan. It's Paul. It's me. It's Jules in the booth with Chris Ferreira backing her up and uh marine is away at disney on disney. on vacation disney world disney world big i difference. will say big difference this week commuting has been fabulous because all the kiddos are on break i know it's beautiful it's great. i didn't even think of that yeah. it's so great i love it easy sailing um all right so obviously we've got to talk about this draft <laughs> and i want to start right off the top because we often reference paul's shows and yesterday I was listening to one of them, and they were talking about something that Greg Bedard wrote. And he talked to, you know, unnamed, but a, no, this was an old-time uh, NFL executive who's touched all aspects of – he's been a head coach. He was a GM, I guess. He was a uh, quarterback's coach. He's touched all aspects of interacting with a quarterback. And he was saying that – it, as often the case, and he thinks it is this year, that teams start looking at these quarterbacks through beer goggles. That they're so desperate to have the guy, and they overrate these guys. And I and it resonated with me because that's what I've been saying. Are we overrating these quarterbacks? Maybe with the exception of Caleb Williams, because you know everybody needs a quarterback, and you want these guys to be good. And you know. We're lowering the bar. I really hope that's not true. I mean, if you look at the 2021 class and you see how the overreaching happened there and what happened with that, you would hope that they're going into this year's class with, you know, 20, 2020 vision. Like, I would be getting LASIK right now and making sure I can <laughs> right, see. Right, right, Because you saw what happened with that. And I know that we don't have a crystal ball to see how these guys are going to turn out. But if you're not absolutely sold on the guy, I don't want you to reach for him. Because mm -hmm. the average person, the layman, like myself, looks at past drafts and say, how could anybody think Josh Rosen was going to be a franchise quarterback? You know, like just one example, mm -hmm. but there's a plenty of those examples. Yep. Like how do you miss that bad? I think a lot of it. And when you say, are we lowering the bar? I think the bar is relative. Like, are we lowering the bar to what? Are we low None of these guys we can sit here and say, this guy is going to be the next Patrick Mahomes and that guy is going to be the next Josh Allen because nobody knows. 
So every year these quarterbacks are getting graded of, off of potential of what they could be at the next level. So I don't know what we're what what's the bar, you know, like what are we? To, to and me, I think we didn't know that Josh Allen was going to look like that or Patrick Mahomes right. was going to be. And, and I guess Mahomes. that's kind of what I'm getting at is at the end of the day, a lot of it is between the ears. Yeah, and, and it's it's not just between the ears, between the lines. It's also off the field and who has the drive and who has the competitiveness and who has the want to. And I think you you mentioned Josh Rosen. That was Josh Rosen's problem. That's Zach Wilson's problem. Zach Wilson is not brevy to like it's not a talent issue mm-hmm. with Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson just doesn't give a damn. And, and and that's how you get to where you're at at this point with Zach Wilson. So I think that that's one of the things that you hope that teams that have all the information and have all the access to these guys have a leg up on everybody is that you would think so they're in the room with these guys and they're, and they're getting to know how they're wired and they're getting to know, you know, how, what, what's important to them and those types of things. This is why guys like JJ McCarthy have these, these rises up the board because we watch them in the fall. They're not, they're just what they are. Mm -hmm. But then you get to this time of year and you hear about, the visits and the interviews and the whiteboard and all these other things. And all of a sudden now he's a top five pick. Yeah. So yeah, I agree, Freddie, that we probably do overrate them a little bit because of the position. Um, but I also agree with Evan's point about, I, I think that the vast majority of guys that miss all positions early in the draft, it's not necessarily a talent problem. It's not because some coach looked at that guy and thought he could do X and he physically can't. It's more the other stuff that Evan's talking about. But isn't shouldn't there be a way to uncover that? Like what? How you know, important I, it is to people? You know, I'm not saying you do like psych, psychological battery well, of do. tests. They but, do. But yeah, but no. Like as an example, some people just don't test well. So you know as what I mean? an, like, but as an like, example, like Christian Barmore was a yeah. guy who a lot of people at Alabama thought football wasn't all that important to him. Yeah. Um, that's why he kind of. Dropped down a little bit to the second round, but that, exactly. But, but it dropped. wasn't. But it wasn't a talent issue. Right. It was people thought that that he wasn't necessarily a high motor guy, and he had thought about quitting. I think at one point at Alabama. But those things uh, were identified, right. and that's why he right. dropped. Why right. didn't right. identify? But, but, but that they were Zach wrong. Wilson but didn't they were care. wrong. What, 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 I'm not done. Yeah. They were wrong. But I'm just. He doesn't have those issues. No, but I'm just saying. Or or he got past those issues, but, and he's been a productive player. Yeah. Right. The, the opposite can be true, too. Like, you think that a guy doesn't have any problems. Like, Josh Rosen, to use the example you brought up, I mean, obviously he can play. He has the ability to throw the ball at the NFL level. But there's other things that go into it that he evidently didn't have. I find it really amazing with him in particular that he got drafted in the top ten with Arizona. They moved on when they had a coaching change. Happens all the time. New guy comes in, he wants his own guy. He never really got another shot. No. Mm-hmm. He played a little bit in Miami. Yep. But not really anything extensive that you could see. Can this guy play? He's ne- no one's ever really given him a shot. Trey Lance has never had a shot. Yeah. Trey, but he, well, on he, any team. Well, Trey Lance started. He got yeah, hurt. Yeah, but, I mean, he, he started, lost his, he got hurt. He lost his job twice for injury. It just wasn't really – He's never I don't think truly we've heard the last chance. of Trey Lance. No, I, yeah, yeah. I, but I, I, like, I think when he, he hasn't proven he can't play. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, for whatever reason, no one is interested in finding out if Josh Rosen can play yeah. or not. <laughs> like, and my guess is it's all the stuff that Evan's talking about that's, especially a quarterback, probably just yeah, as important. Yeah, I just, I just look at the guys who, you know, obviously no one's a can't miss. But the guys who were true blue chippers that were drafted high, and I'm talking, you know, recently, like Andrew Luck, you know. Well, he's a he, – when we – we don't throw – like, I try not to throw generational talent around as much anymore. Andrew Luck was a generational yeah, talent. you know, and and even – I and I, I don't say he's a gener- generational talent, but someone who deserved to be drafted 1-1, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, obviously he's having his, you know, stumblings, you know, mm-hmm. over in uh, Jacksonville. But I still think that he deserved to be 1-1. Oh, for sure. A lot of guys, though, that are up there in the top five, I don't think deserve to be up there. And they're just there because we need somebody to be up there that's a quarterback. And I, I mean, I think that's true for J.J. McCarthy. Yep. I think Drake May and Jaden Daniels are worth top five picks because of the physical ability. You do. 
Oh, hundred yeah. percent. And that's where I want to get. You know, obviously, yeah. I want to get this a long way to Grandma's house, but that's where I want to <laughs> get to. Are these guys truly worthy of being up there, or are they only up there because of the competition? Because that's who's available. So, like, if you were to do a true big board of this class where positional value and the fact that they're quarterbacks is not supposed to be part of this, then pretty much everybody has Jaden Daniels and Drake may in their top 10 prospects in the entire draft. And then those guys get propped up to two and three, maybe a little bit by the fact they play. I know everybody's got them up there, but is that correct? No, but like, like just to use the the quarterbacks and you have the beast in front of you that you printed out and killed a lot of trees. Um, (laughs) So <laughs> renewable resource, you can always plant more. So Michael Penix is a very gifted passer. He's got him. Dane Brugler, I, I can never say Brugler. 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 Yeah. Uh, he has him rated in the mid fifties. Right. So he doesn't get the quarterback bump. He's ranking the players as he sees them fitting in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what you know what I'm saying? Well, I think Penix, because of his age and injuries, that's why well, he's in, down in there. the skill set. Yeah. Like he's a really gifted passer, mm-hmm. but that's kind of it. Yeah. Whereas these other guys can pass and move. Yeah. And and offer a, a different level of athleticism, I think, than some of the other guys. I that's why I would separate um, the top three from the rest. But a lot of people are putting McCarthy right in there. So and I think he has him in like twenty one. Yeah. Or so something to, like, to that. like to keep going with Dane because the beast is right there in front of you. He has Drake May as uh, <laughs> the fourth rated prospect on his board. He has Jaden Daniels at eight. And he has JJ at 21. 21. And okay. Daniel Jeremiah, I think, has J- JJ in the 20 to 25 range as well. That's a player to me that gets overdrafted every single year, is the JJ McCarthy's of the world, because these coaches and executives fall in love with the intangibles. That's they fall- the quarterback bump. If right. he goes in the top five, like a lot of people think, I think most people feel like he's a, a mid 20s prospect. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that Drake May and Jaden Daniels fit that. that same way that McCarthy does. And it goes back to Tamara's point when you brought up Josh Allen and mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes. That's the kind – I mean, I, again, no one's – if we anybody that. knew that, right. that it's going to happen, we, yeah. everybody would take in these two guys one, two. Yeah. Right. But that's the – to me, that's the upside that you're looking at is those kinds of skill sets with these three guys. Caleb Williams, we've talked about with Mahomes. And, you know, May and Daniels with Lamar Jackson and, and Josh Allen. Yeah. If they all hit – no one's going to sit there and say, wow, I can't believe they took Drake May three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like you also have to like add into the equation the teams that they're going to go play for and the systems that they're going to go play for and the pieces that are around them too. Because like, what if someone's really great and then they have no support around them? They have no offensive line, no weapons, bad coaching. Like pretty much a situation that Trevor Lawrence went into. Like He went into a disaster his first year. So yeah. That's such a great tough. point because you're evaluating the prospect in the draft is different between what happens to them after that. Like their development after that yeah. is now on all the teams to, mm-hmm. to your point, put the right stuff around them, you know, to iron out some of their weaknesses in their game and things like that. And I think a lot of the time these guys fail because of that piece of it, not because they come into the draft and they get drafted high and they don't have the talent. It's because they go to situations that ruin them. I mean, we kind of had one of those here mm. in some ways. So we I talked think that about that's that. a we, big part of it. Were you on with us last week? I, I know that you were doing the interviews on one of the days. Yeah. And I, I brought that up, Freddie, with, with Mike and you. And just if there could be a really in that in-depth study as to why these guys fail mm-hmm. and take away a lot of take a lot of factors. Like everybody is just – it's such a blanket thing. Like the guy played too soon. Yeah, they ruined him. He wasn't ready. They ruined him. Or, you know – whatever the case may be. Whereas all these other things, like maybe he played too soon and it ruined him. Mm-hmm. Maybe he played too soon and uh, he never got another didn't have shot. The, didn't, didn't have the mental toughness to fight through it. So right. you were just, as Fred pointed out last week, you were just going to find that out anyway, whether it was going to be in the first year or like Mac Jones in year two and year three. You know, at some point it's going to come out. But – what kind of weapons does he have to work with? What kind of protection yeah. does he get? What kind of a system is he entering into? Is it conducive to his skill set? What kind of defense does he have? Is he constantly you know, throwing the ball 40 mm-hmm. to 45 times because he's playing from behind every week? There's a million different factors that, that go into this. And I think that just to say, like, well, that guy, he was a bust. I I would love that, Paul, especially when you're looking at somebody like Bryce Young, for example, in the Panthers. Like, if he gets keeps getting a new head coach every year, like – 
what's going to happen to him? Right. And yeah. they keep trading away their pieces, and his, his team isn't very good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Coordinator. Are we ever going to? S- yeah. You find out, you know, that Frank Reich didn't want him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you think that's easy to play under a coach that didn't want you? And I'm not blaming Frank Reich, by the way, but. That came out after he got fired last year is that he wanted Stroud. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of guys after the guy hits, they want, you know, the <laughs> the, the Ben McAdoo theory after the guy hits. Like, you know, Aww. I was on that. Yeah. So I, I, I had that, nailed it. Maybe someone listening can send me the exact quote from the Bedard story. Uh, the quote is from this NFL executive. I thought it was. A, so what did Charlie was, Weiss say again? It was a cautionary tale. It was. Well. Kind could, of sounds like Charlie. It could have been. Guys. It could have been. No, he said G- GM. He was never a GM. Yeah, it could have been. Um, I just don't know what the alternative is. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree that the likelihood is is that if five quarterbacks get taken in the first round, two of them will probably be pretty good, like can play in the league. One of them will probably be really good. And then the other three teams are going to be Zach Wilson. And, They're going to be back in the draft two years from now looking right. for a quarterback. Right. And I, but the alternative is to not take the swing and then just forever be in, qu- in quarterback purgatory. Mm-hmm. That's the that, gamble. That sums it, it up. It, it they, is. they can either take a guy and have him bust and you have to do it again, or you can not take a guy and you still have to do it again. I mean, the Jets took like, Darnold and Zach Wilson mm-hmm. within like a three- or four-year span, and they missed both times. Mm-hmm. So that – that can easily happen. Yeah. I also think with when you have two of those three teams in the top three with brand new coaching staffs too, it's like it can go either way for both the commanders and here. Like all of us have brand new everything. Yeah. How often, um, you know, do three of the top three teams need quarterbacks? All need quarterbacks <laughs> every year. Is, it, is that? I, I mean, I haven't, I can't remember, but yeah. is that, I mean, is that happened, always the case? In 21, it was, it was three quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, you, th- I mean, usually been, you're drafting that high because you have right. bad quarterback the, play. There, there's <laughs> been a lot of, I would say, like in threes, but four, when yeah. you got four in a row, I don't even know if that's ever yeah. happened. Last year it was three out of four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, then two years earlier, it was the first three. Um, there have been times where... I, I think there's been some other examples of three. I don't know about four. Yeah. I, you know, and that somebody said that this could be a record of amount of offensive, offensive players. players. I saw so if you're, if, you're, that today. if you're set on offense and you're looking for defensive help, this is a good draft this year because mm-hmm. you're going to get a pick of some of the best players. Well, the defensive p- players aren't as good, though. They're not. No. Well, cornerback's pretty deep. Cornerback's deep, but I wouldn't say that there's top-end talent yeah. in the cornerback class. Edge is really good, too, in this class. But Dallas Turner is probably the best prospect in the edge group. I mean, I know it depends on who you ask. You know, some people like Verse, some people like Law, too. But I think Dallas Turner is the consensus. Uh, but he's not He's not Miles Garrett. You know, like he's not like one of these, at, you know, freak of nature edge rushers that's going to go have a chance to go with the first overall pick in most drafts. Von Miller. So, yeah. right. Like he's not one of those types of guys. Yeah. I like Verse. Not that it matters because it's not, you know, he's going to go in the middle of the first round somewhere and not yeah. really. Well, that goes into knee, but our, I love his story. Heavy handed. Our, our first emailer. Heavy handed. Oh, I, I throw mm-hmm. that one around. Our Very first powerful. emailer, uh, Johnny from Germany, says, nice to see Tamara around again. Hi. Uh, so my question, what would be the favorite draft pick, not May or Daniels, for each of you? Mm-hmm. Maybe one not at three. So other than quarterback, what's, who do you hope that the Patriots get the most? I don't have a specific – I mean, I I hope they get a wide receiver who can play immediately the most. But, like, I don't know which one it is. Uh, You know, you guys have heard all those names Mm -hmm. down there in, like, the third round. You know, like – Yeah. I I asked um, the Beast, the Beast Master today about that. He he mentioned Malachi Corley uh, is one of the guys. I mean, just someone – they should be able to draft a, a receiver in the third round who can play right away. I'm not talking about excel right away. I mean, play. You know, can you get a Pop Douglas? Right. You know, right. You know, you know. I would like more than that, but something that that would be most excite me because they need they need some weapons. They yeah. need some so help on offense. I'm gonna be boring and say Joe Alt. Um, oh. I think if they did trade back and they were able to get him, that'd be really great. Just addressing offensive line needs to protect whatever quarterback is out there. Okay. Yeah, assuming they go quarterback at three, I would say Adonai Mitchell. From Texas, A.D. Mitchell. Okay. I think that that is the best combination of size, speed, upside, being able to play on the outside, mm-hmm. 
that they're going to have a chance to get. Like, Brian Thomas Jr. is the dream, but he's not going to fall that far. Yeah, I kind of like Evan's thinking, too, like second-round receivers that don't wait till the third. The mm-hmm. third round is tough because I think all those guys, although there is talent in the depth of the class, it's all complementary guys. Like, I don't see a Jalen Polk being a number one receiver in the league. I don't see, I, I'm not a big Malachi Gorley guy in general, but I don't see him being – you know, three years from now, it's looking and saying, oh, well, that was like the A.J. Brown of this class or the Terry McLaurin of this class. Uh, there's probably going to be one or two of those types of guys that do end up uh, it, you know, exceeding expectations. But I think at the top of the second round is, is where you can get – Should be able to get a good player. You know, your guy, Ladd McConkey. That's why I just where, think it's going to be a tackle. Do you think it's better to get a second-round second wide receiver or a second-round tackle? Uh, I go back and forth on that one. I, I would say receiver – because I just think that that player is going to make more of an immediate impact than the tackle. I think once you get to those second round tackles, you're starting to talk about some developmental guys. Who's yeah. the behemoth? I think he's from Texas. Is it Mims or no, uh, Georgia. Georgia? Georgia. Our, our Marius yes. Mims. Yeah, he's, he's the guy I like too, but he's hardly played. Yeah, that, that would be my worry about him. He's got seven career starts, like 800 snaps in college. Why? Uh, why injured, is that? He was injured last year, and then he was behind Broderick Jones before that. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, that's tough with, with Georgia. You have so many NFL players around you that to crack the lineup can be difficult. But uh, he's a guy that I wonder if he could last to 34 because of those reasons. You know, he's got first round tape all day, but teams might be scared off by the injury last year, might be scared off by the fact that they don't have a ton of film to pull from yep. to really see him. Uh, but if you just turn on the tape, then he's a first round grade. 100%. See, the, the tackle wide receiver thing in the second round I think is hard. I don't really care as much about playing immediately because mm-hmm. I don't – like I'm not I'm not Gerard Mayo. I don't have to worry <laughs> about like what my record is right away. Um, but I – but Evan makes a good point about like if you think there's that big of a difference between the caliber of player. That's because my point. Because I listen to, to – I'm just going to call him Dane from now on. Um, this morning – you know, when I was on my show, Fred, it was actually my show. Yeah. Um, he did talk a lot about that sort of drop off after like six or seven tackles. And that's where you might get at the top of the second round. And if it's that big of a difference, mm-hmm. then it's it's going to be hard to say A.D. Mitchell is not substantially better than some tackle that's available with the, the eighth tackle off the board or the seventh tackle that, off that's, the board. That's how I'm looking at it is that you got to stick to the board. And I feel like at, at 34, the tackle pick is more likely to be your reach than the receiver pick at that point. M- you know, maybe a guy like Mims falls, maybe a guy like Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma falls just because of the way the board mm-hmm. breaks down. But assuming that the consensus top five or six tackles are off the board, I have to think that the, the fifth receiver off the board might be better than like the seventh or eighth tackle off the board. So I don't think the order of operations matters all that much. I just want to take the best player available at 34. So someone who might a receiver who might be available like in the 3rd round. Yeah. What do you think of Johnny Wilson from Florida? Interesting player. Like I don't know him. So Johnny Wilson is like 6'6", 330 pounds or 230 pounds, 300 would be crazy. Uh 230 pounds. <laughs> That's quite a receiver. 230 pounds, uh built like a tight end but moves like a receiver. I'm out. It's kind of crazy. Six, six, two thirty. It's a weird. It's the weirdest player that I think in this in this receiver class to project and understand because he plays like a wide receiver, but he's in the tight end's body. Like he's not very consistent at the catch point. He's not one of and these in two jump years ball he'll guys. He'll be a tight end, but he can move. Like he can run routes. Yeah, at mm-hmm. that size. So, so he intrigues me a little bit. Yeah, he's yeah. a he's an interesting player. I just the part that I think concerns me with him is I think what Paul is kind of getting at is what is he? You know, what position does he actually play? And where are we actually going to find a a way for him to be a high volume guy? But as an athlete, he's just super uh, different that he moves that well at that size, but doesn't like really play to that size. Like he doesn't play like a big receiver, but he moves like a small receiver. Yeah, bizarre. Yeah. That's interesting. Some people have him at six seven. You interested in yeah. lunch? Oh yeah, we got to get lunch. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just got the message from Jules. Oh. 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 So yeah, what are you gonna get? An Italian. You gonna get an Italian? Yeah. I got a small pep. Make yeah. it easy. <laughs> All right. Web radio at patriots dot com is the Can email address. We got a lot of people emailing Talk to in. Freddie. Uh, we still don't have a phone system. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Marine's not here. 
and then he just sent me an email. We need even more equipment to make it happen. Oh, so, boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this thing is getting more complicated by the day. Um, Jason writes in, we're obviously getting a lot of emails about the quarterback, and that's fine. Like I said, we're nine days away from this, his, what should be an historic pick for the New England Patriots. Jason says, Jaden Daniels completed 73% of his throws in college versus Drake May, 63%. Jaden threw 16 more TD passes in May. Yes, Jaden had better talent to throw to, but he's also competing against much tougher competition. May threw nine interceptions. Daniels threw four. May rushed for 449 yards. Daniels rushed for 1,134. I understand the hype for Drake May. He's tall, Josh Allen-like, has years to grow and learn, and supposedly has a cannon for an arm but something just doesn't click for me with him. As a Patriots fan, help me get excited about Drake May, as he will probably be our third pick in the first round. I can't do it on my own. Go easy on me, Evan and Paul. <laughs> I would just I, I would just say that that's a lot of box score scouting. Yeah, I was going to say. Like I, would, I would go watch. I'm not asking you to go do what I do and grind the tape and all that kind of stuff, but just go watch like some YouTube highlights. Mm -hmm. Like Go actually watch the guy play, because wa looking at the box score is not going to tell you anything. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, too, and just say you have to actually look at their system and how it translates to the NFL, because if you're just looking at numbers, I mean, then a lot more quarterbacks would be in the picture if all you're looking at is just stats. Right. So I looked at Jaden Daniels a little bit, and, and I'm not positive on the timelines on this, but his best year by far at Arizona State was when Brandon Ayuk was still there. Early on. And his best year by far at LSU was when Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas were there. So... I do wonder if this is a guy who would look more like Drake May looked this year mm -hmm. if he was playing with Drake May's cast of uh, supporting yeah. characters. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's probably and the that's, best selling that's just, I mean, that's a little bit of a – it's a projection. I don't know. Uh, Daniels had by far the better year. I don't really care about completion percentage, quite honestly. Um, it's, to me, the most meaningless stat in football. Um, but you, you can watch a guy and – I would say that Drake May struggles with accuracy. Like, I don't think that that's unfair yeah. to say. So I, no one's jumping on you. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can look at all these guys and come out with a guy that they like the best. Yeah. I think it's kind of in the eye of the beholder in some of these cases. So if you like Jaden Daniels better, there's a guy that called in a couple of months ago yelling at all of us about <laughs> Jaden Daniels, if you remember. Yeah, the guy from Albany, right? Mm -hmm. He's been on Jaden Daniels for a long time. There's, there's nothing not to like about Jaden Daniels. Like it's I dynamic mean, athlete. Some of the passing profile is not great in terms of translation to the NFL. Uh, you know, passing up middle of the field throws it probably being the biggest thing. Uh, his his profile matches a lot of the same things that Justin Fields was coming out of Ohio State, which I think is probably my biggest concern. You know, takes a lot of sacks, holds the ball a lot passes up throws that are open NFL open type throws over the middle of the field. Like th those are the concerns that you have, but his tape is electric. I mean, you watch the, hi the highlights, you watch whatever you want to watch, go watch him play against Florida. I think he had like 600 total yards of offense. Like he just guy can't be stopped. He's unstoppable. It'd be so fun too, if we were able to draft one of his one receivers and kind of get like a, yeah, I mean that I don't Joe think Burrow happening. and chase situation. Hey, you never know. Neighbors I think is gone by six to the Giants. I think that's probably his floor. And Brian Thomas Jr., I think, is a top 20 guy. Maybe he slides. Um, <laughs> Maybe. Joe writes in, if the Patriots draft J.J. McCarthy, I want my money back for my season tickets. Fair. And it proves Wolf and the rest of the current front office helped Belichick screw up the draft for the last five years. I wouldn't go that far, but I understand. I will also cry probably. if they draft him. Really? You're, you're anti-J.J.? Yeah. Not at three. Not at three. Now, if, well, if, if, we, like, if we were like the 18th pick, maybe, but not at three. It's tough. It, I think it's tough to look at him and, and put him in the same tier as the other guys, mm -hmm. which has been where I've been at, at it since probably January or February with J.J. McCarthy. It's just he's not – he doesn't have, you know, the – it's a projection that he's mm -hmm. going to be able to carry a team. Yeah, I think that – had he not won the national championship, we would not be having this conversation right now. I think he's a clean prospect. Like, he doesn't make mistakes. He's smart, you know, looks the part. But, like, he's not dynamic. He's not as exciting to watch as the other three. The only thing I could say in rebuttal to that is he wasn't asked to be dynamic. He didn't need to be dynamic. He didn't need to put the team on his shoulders very often and win the game. And that's not his fault. Is that Mac Jones' fault? What do you mean? 
Like he did, he wasn't asked to do that in college either. Different offense. Mac Jones. Different did, style. Mac, I would say Mac Jones did it more than JJ. Yeah, did. I would say so too. I mean, he threw downfield. He had two really dynamic. But he pers- never faced anyone good. And like the SEC wasn't the SEC when Mac was playing in it. Like he they blew everybody out. Whereas the SEC now, like you actually have to go through Georgia and LSU. Like there's actually competition. I don't know, Georgia was pretty good back then. No. Yeah, the SEC, but not the Big Ten. Like I yeah. just don't yeah. think that McCarthy. I don't look at the Big Ten as all that different than the ACC. I said yeah. this a couple of weeks ago. I know. Ago. There's two teams at the top. I, yeah. I think that Ohio State and Michigan have sort of progressed to the point where they can compete with anybody. Yep. The rest of the conference kind of stinks. Yep. Penn State is decent, but they can't beat Ohio State or no. Michigan. Uh-huh. Right. And, you know, yeah. maybe maybe McCarthy is that guy. Maybe he's going to be one of those guys that he's better in – in the pros than he was in college because he's allowed to do more and he never was allowed. That's the way that Harbaugh wanted to play. But we talk about, you know, but most we'll of see. these guys are being talked about in the first round because they're all talented. They all have talent. And Bill has talked about this before, Belichick. You know, you, you get to the draft and all the guys have talent. Right. You know, um, but it's the intangibles. Are they coachable? You know, how fast do they process? Um, you know, what's their attitude toward the game of football? Do they love it? Is it really important to them? And it seems that McCarthy really checks all those boxes. I wouldn't say he checks the processing box. The rest of them, I think the intangibles are definitely true. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how, like, I, I read the quote about him wanting guys that were interested in winning, not chasing girls and partying. Yeah. Okay. So that's an intangibles box. The rest of it, I don't know how you can determine from here. If he's smart, if he pro- – like, and all these things. Like, you can – I mean, certainly the, the teams will have more intel on that mm-hmm. because they're going to have meetings with them. And Evan talked about some of the stuff about putting plays on boards and then coming back the next day yeah. and, and doing things like that. Um, that's – like, that to me is, is stuff that teams can know. But I don't – like, I went on a rant about this last week. I don't know how J.J. McCarthy has emerged as, quote, unquote, the safe prospect. I don't yeah. understand it's it. Weird. I don't. Yeah. I don't know why his bust rate is any right. less than Caleb Williams or anybody else. Yeah, I mean, if you're just gonna, because people look at what he did in in college and they think that's what he's going to do in the pros. No, more. Yeah. Of, but then that more be, is going to be. But asked, that would be a bust, right? Like yeah. if the, if he plays the way he did in college mm-hmm. and right. is under center all the time right. and turns around and hands the ball off. Yep. Right. He'll be a bust, and the mm-hmm. team's going to stay. I mean, more is going to be asked of him in the pros. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. Yeah, can he handle it? That I mean, I just think that's that's what it comes down to. Is yeah. can you imagine this guy consistently? Not like the one time Mac Jones beat Josh Allen, but like consistently go toe to toe with Josh Allen, where you are in a thirty five thirty game and you actually have a chance to win the game at the end of the day against that level of quarterback and that level of offense. And I, I just think with JJ, like if he goes to Minnesota. I think he has a really good chance of succeeding with Minnesota because they can ask him to do what he did at Michigan. Yeah. Like we're just going to ask him to get the ball to Justin Jefferson and make some plays on third down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think with the advances in technology, AI and VR and all that, I think there's going to be a way within just 10 years to bring up to bring in a a quarterback prospect and actually put the goggles on him whatever the tech is and have them go through a game and and have to process a game in real time uh, against real hmm. pressure. They do have stuff like that already. I, I remember a couple of years ago, the Cardinals were, it was a big thing with the Cardinals. It's it's VR. Like it's a VR headset and you wear it and you go through it. But I just think the, the problem is, is that there's no fear that you're going to get hit. Well, right. that's, no, but they'll figure that out too. Oh, oh okay. they'll actually hit them? Yeah. Is this like a, a like an offshoot of your kicker competition? I mean, from, I love it. Yeah. From <laughs> like 15 years ago? Well, well, I forget. When... Vinatieri left, and we drafted oh, Gustavo. Oh, Parcells told him he held a gun to his head. And we were going to have no. I think you wanted a knife to his throat. Yeah, him and Martin Gramatica. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Like and we have, or we have your wife, uh, right. You know, held hostage. Yeah. And if you miss this kick, she's dead. Yeah, some way to really test their mental. This is what I deal with. Yeah, you guys think I'm just cranky. <laughs> this is what L- I deal listen. With. I'm going to invest a lot in you. I, you know, you're going to be my. The face of our franchise. We have to make sure that you can handle this. That's why you watch the tape. Yeah. That's all you got. But again, even the tape, it's who's the competition? What was the situation? Blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I think you can just sort of. I mean, there's a reason why the first round hit rate is much higher than the second round and yeah. the third round. And the fo- like, 
The yeah. better but they they get it right. Right. A lot. Uh, hey, Patriots fans, if you want to see Toyota's best offers, including those not seen on TV, go to buyatoyota.com. It's Toyota's official website for deals from the official vehicle of the New England Patriots. Toyota, nine days to the draft. Let's go. Uh, and uh, support the home team. Join New England's event staff here at Gillette Stadium. Season, seasonal positions are available in food and beverage, parking, and security. Come meet us in person at Walk-In Wednesday every Wednesday in April from 8.30 to 6.30 p.m. Gillette Stadium, E1 entrance. You may get an on-the-spot offer to join the team. So if you're looking for a little extra cash, a little walking around money during the football season, come on and sign up and work at Gillette Stadium. Be part of the team. Word. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, back to the emails, web radio at patriots.com. Christian writes in, I just wanted to clear the air, he says. Oh. Paul mentioned last week some of us had quieted down regarding not wanting May because <laughs> it looks like that's who the Patriots may draft. I'm still in the camp of not wanting May and will much rather have Daniels or Penix trade down and get some extra capital from the Vikings, Raiders, etc. If you are able to possibly fill two holes and still get the quarterback, I'd like I'd much rather do that than a guy list. who I believe won't make it in the NFL. I also, lo I Mike, lost my list. Mike, I respect your view. He's not, He's here, not here on May, but have you watched Jaden play? You said you don't want college football. I think that will help you get more in on Jaden if you spent some time watching the kid play. Jeez, well, I was accu accusing Mike of not See, watching. See, this is those are my favorites. Th yeah, like. I know who this is, and he's been on the same train f about Drake May the whole time, which is fine. But Mike watches plenty of these guys. Don't don't be taking shots at Mike. And I like Jaden Daniels more than Mike does, but yeah, I, I, I just like May more. I, I, think I understand more conventional than yeah than Daniels. I understand all the reasons why Mike doesn't like Jaden Daniels. I, I think that. Mike is worth. Mike grew up in a way he liked his quarterbacks <laughs> to sit back in the pocket and throw the football. Yeah. No, he was. He's a little bit more old school. I think he's a little bit worried about about him being a high level passer, which I think is totally valid. But, but if you're a guy who needs time, mm -hmm. um, is it better to be like a Drake May type player or Jaden Daniels, where Jaden Daniels can always rely on his legs to get him out of trouble? So doesn't that hurt his development? That he that he does that? Yeah. Yeah, but because he's not sitting in the pocket processing and learning, he's no, just I know. for a sign of trouble, he's tucked tail. Yeah. And go. This is giving me like flashbacks of when Lamar Jackson was getting drafted and how everyone kind of doubted him and like what he was going to be able to do in the NFL because he did use his legs so much. Yeah, they're very different players and stylistically, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, but I agree that the impact they have on the game is very similar because of their mobility like mm -hmm. you're defensively yep. i think the game plan even though they run differently and they throw differently and all that it's not conceptually it's not going to be very different like you're going to have to keep that guy in the pocket you're going to have to have spies you're going to have to have uh you know zone coverages with all eyes on the quarterback uh, you're going to have to scheme up a way to stop a design quarterback run game like those those runs are going to be in the game plan every single week if you're the patriots and you have Jaden daniels those things are really attractive uh, for any team i think the biggest thing uh with him that he just needs to work on is you know having that ability to process the middle of the field and, and take those throws that are available to him in those areas and i would also say he's not a off script thrower he's not a guy that's going to get outside the pocket with his legs and keep his eyes downfield and make throws off platform. I think that's the biggest difference to me between Lamar yeah. and Jaden is Lamar w is, is willing to take those throws when he gets off. I think off may is too. I think may, that, can, that's may, may makes a, a lot of big plays. That, uh, doing that's that. exactly what he is. You know, and I'll say that I, you know, I, I love Lamar Jackson. He's one of my favorite players in the league uh, to watch, but I'll tell you that I hear from a lot of fans that to this day, tell me how he's not that good. Hmm. He's overrated. He's well, he's silly. a running back playing quarterback. He's going to win MVPs, but you're not ever going to win anything with him. So there is still like this element of people that oh, yeah. they don't want their quarterback to be a runner. They want him to be a passer who can run, right. like Mahomes. Right. Yeah. I think Lamar and Jaden Daniels are different, though. Like I, Lamar. Lamar peppers the middle of the field. Like that's that's where he lives. Oh yeah, is, you know, in breakers, ends, seams. You know, when Andrews like, is but healthy. think back. But think back to when Lamar came into the league that first year. He was overmatched. Yeah, he just made plays with his legs. Not when he played the Patriots. 
that well, wasn't his first year. year. Oh, was it? No. Because they, they killed us that game. Right. But two. that wasn't his first year. Yeah. He that was his second year when he won the MVP. Yeah. But when he first came into the league, he they won some games, and they ended up making the playoffs because he relieved Joe Flacco that year um, and took took the job for good. But I remember he was completely overwhelmed by a very bad San Diego Chargers defense in the first round of the playoffs because he had no ability to beat you from the pocket. He wanted to run all the time. The Chargers, if you remember this, <laughs> you like to make fun of me, <laughs> used all those like defensive backs as linebackers. Adrian Phillips. And they kept Lamar Jackson from running to beat them, and they dominated that game. That same Chargers defense tried to come to Foxborough the following week and do the same thing and gave up 41 points or something like that um, in, in the divisional round to the Patriots. So I think there's a lot of people that st- – I love Lamar Jackson. I think he's dynamic. I think he throws certainly well enough that you can win with him. But he hasn't won big. Mm-hmm. He hasn't won in the playoffs when it counts. Yeah. He, now he's I also take gotten him, a lot better as a thrower. Oh, he, a lot by better. leaps and bounds. And if Jaden Daniels has that kind of a track, you're going to talk about him the same way because he can run. Yeah, the, I think the biggest the advantage that Jaden Daniels has is that he's a much more mechanically sound thrower coming, coming into the league. Yeah, I agree. much smoother throwing delivery, you know, much more efficient in the pocket with his feet. Lamar Jackson had some true mechanical things that needed to be worked out. You know, footwork, he kind of had like a shot put release coming out. It wasn't really like a, <laughs> a smooth, you know, typical release. Jaden Daniels looks the part throwing the ball that you would think of a prototypical quarterback. Uh, Diana from New Hampshire, getting excited about the draft. First of all, so grateful for your insight and entertainment every week as I look forward to watching you Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, do you think there's a possibility the Patriots could make a trade during the draft for either Ayuk or Higgins? What would be the cost uh, of the trade required to get either of them? What do you think? Probably the, the second round pick. So Ayuk has yeah. erased all 49ers from his timeline. Is yeah. that true? Yeah. yeah. I mean, guys have done that before. He doesn't mm-hmm. follow the 49ers anymore. Yeah, okay. On, like, Instagram and stuff. Very, very hurt. Yeah. He, his he's, his hit feelings are hurt. Yes. See, what would you give for Ayuk? 34. You wouldn't give a first round? No. No. No, I mean. No, because yeah. I, I, only because of the situation they're in. Right. Yeah. Would I, I give mean, if you're going to give a first if, round, you might as well take Marvin Harrison, right? It, it, well, you're not really got, You're not giving three. Yeah. Like, that's not even part of the conversation. I think 34 this year and then maybe a pick from next year's draft on day two or day three, like a third or a fourth rounder from next year. Like, maybe I would do that, and that would get it done. I mean, Ayuk's a great player and, and would be a great fit here. So I, I would I would definitely entertain it. But, no, you're not you're not giving – you can't, as the Patriots, be giving up first-round picks right now for, for guys like Ayuk. Yeah. It's yeah. Justin and, Jefferson. And, and you different. don't have a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like, if you had a quarterback, then you could make a trade like that. But I don't see how you can give up your first-round pick and to acquire – this is like taking Marvin Harrison at three. Right. Yeah. Like what's the, more the expensive what's, and older? What's the issue with him? He uh, he wants more money. Ayuk, yeah, he, he's he's coming up on the contract. Uh, I think uh, he was a, a first round pick, so he probably has the fifth year option. I think yeah. this is year four, and then he has the fifth year option on top of that. So he's not a true free agent yet, and, and you know, in the, for the next couple of years, but he needs to be paid. Yeah. Any chance instead they pay him and get rid of Debo Samuel, <laughs> and we get him? That could. So let's we could talk about that a little bit because. That's one of my pet peeves is, oh, look at the free agent class. is going to be huge next year because all those guys. It's Jefferson, Chase, Jalen Waddell, C.D. Lamb. There's a lot of yeah, C.D. Lamb, Ooh. by the way, right. he's pissed off. Right. At, right. So there's a lot of big-time receivers that are going to be due money. Like you saw with Devontae Smith, you know, cross one off the list then. Like, yeah. the great players like that will generally get re-signed, and if they don't, if this turns out to be a thing with Ayuk and he has to get dealt, it's going to cost you a lot. Yeah. Like when A.J. Brown went from Tennessee to Philly, it's a, a high pick and a, a big money contract. Now, a guy to keep in mind now is A.J. Brown. Right. N- not this year because his contract is very affordable. But after the 24 season, there's an out for them and, you know, heading into the 25 season. His numbers is – and when I say numbers, his base salary skyrockets. So that's a guy to – to keep him keep an eye on down the down the road. Uh, Ryan in Connecticut, here's a little game for the crew to play, oh. involving only the realistic draft prospects in May, Daniels, McCarthy, and Penix. 
If you could only pick one restaurant to bring them to, which would it be? So you're in Boston. Hmm. Let's assume it's separate, but you're going to bring them all to the same restaurant at separate times. What would the restaurant be that you'd want to host these guys at? And you're I in Boston, care. not Foxborough. Like we're, well, we're you can venturing be anywhere out. in this area. Well, I just, I, you know, Foxborough. Like if you were here, it's Davios. So. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. But if you're in Boston, I would go to the North End. Yeah. Bring them to the North End? Yeah. Yep. I would, I would take them to Mother Anna's in the North End. Okay. There you go. There's a straight answer But for is you. that like really, what, like? relevant no these, these are weird questions so that's one i think of them. i think Drake, they took drake may to get steaks which it could be davio still so i don't know what that necessarily means but yeah. that's what uh schrager said today steaks. uh where do Craigs. you think the patriots took them i don't know where they took them davios uh <laughs> what is the green flag drink and red flag drink for a prospect to order at dinner <laughs> green flag water that's that's a green flag <laughs> yeah What's red flag like a, like a, like a Long fashioned? Island iced tea, <laughs> Long Island iced an tea, yeah. double, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Double. If you oh, order and well, it seems like that's not your first. Yeah, yeah no Long Island iced teas. No. <laughs> okay, knowing the next day is a workout. What is the green flag dinner and red flag dinner? So he's gonna work out next day. So we're operating under the assumption he's working out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you probably want to go a little lighter then, right? Maybe oh, maybe a salmon. Yeah, I mean, I nice, like, nice you're salad, in New England. Salmon. Side salad. You know, yeah. a little Caesar. You're open to new things. You should order fish. Clam, you know, like clam chowder. Yeah, some type of seafood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who Not, was the guy that um? I heard a story, like within the last week, that some someone was out on a draft visit like that, and they got him and they took him out and they ordered a, a steak and he didn't order anything. Oh, that was a, a Daniel because Jeremiah he, story. Yeah. yeah, who who was like who was the guy? Like he wouldn't say. Oh, okay. So yeah. interesting. He had a another meeting set up. Right. He had a, he was going. He had right a bunch of other dinners. He was yeah. going right from that one to another one. So but, he didn't yeah. want to spoil his appetite. So you, you ordered dinner at the last one. That was before a pro day. All right. So May Daniels, McCarthy, and Penix give each assign each one a drink. Oh. Hmm. May is moonshine. No, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, He's a sun guy. Yeah, I, I don't know. You I don't, don't know. I, I haven't really. I, yeah, and I, and I I'm not Penic, poo-pooing. I'm not poo-pooing the silly questions. Penix I love that. wine. Ma- McCarthy's milk. I, <laughs> I just don't know what. Penix wine because he's from Washington. Okay, Penix. And he's gets, older. Okay, he's right. older. More class. So well, so is Jaden Daniels. So, but mm, Jaden Daniels is a California yeah, boy. So yeah. I, I would say like. You know, like a, a you know Napa vodka Valley. soda, gin and tonic, you know, something <laughs> like that, like something you get at a club in L.A. You know, May would just Miller Light. He would be like, yeah, me. Diet Miller. Okay, Diet Miller. I could see that. What is a running quarterback order? Something with caffeine, Red Bull, Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, give no. him wings. And if you were the prospect, what drink would you get? <laughs> Miller Light. Miller Light. I feel like it. It is a little bit of a test, isn't it? Like, are you know? I would think everything. You don't want. I would think of everything as a test. A water. You don't want to order. I I think a water is like no, no. Trying too hard. No, I think a water is like they're gonna look at that and be like, you know, you can't even loose a little bit and have some fun. Mm. Like you know, we're we're so. Okay, then I would do wine. Wine's safe. I I think beer is the safest. Wine is safe. You can't get mad at a dude for ordering a beer. You can't get mad at a glass of wine with dinner. No matter no matter what you think of the guy, if he orders a beer, like that's a dude's drink. Like you're not gonna. You, there's no judgment for ordering a beer. So so if you were sitting with the prospect and all of a sudden you know, hey Evan, you know what do you want to drink? Uh, and he says, you know, let me see the wine list. I'm out. And he <laughs> and he was like, you know, I'll have the uh, 2008. Hey, blah, 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 that's blah. sophisticated. Would that impress you? It's out. sophisticated. And I like wine, but I'm not. I'm not trying to be a quarterback in the NFL. Oh he knows, my god. He knows. He wine. knows wine, so that means he just doesn't know how to read defenses. No, yeah. it's like, just. Why are you out because of that? <laughs> because like that. That's just. No. Well, maybe he has interests other than you know. No. 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 Nope. You wouldn't Sorry. like that. I, I want my quarterback to be like a dude's dude. Like, you know, I want him to, you know, that's what I want. Like, this you is want, also coming you from some, someone who's obsessed with Josh Allen. Right. You want some toughness. You know, you want some some, some bravado. No, not okay. wine. No, I, if he starts taking the wine list, so he's if like, he, I'll, I'll have a, you know, a Cabernet. No, like, so no. if he says, no. I'll if have, I'll have a West Jack Coast? Daniels and leave the bottle, that would impress you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now we're talking. 
Now no, no talking. coke. Just just give oh, me the just bottle. Straight Jack. Yeah. Yes. Hundred okay. percent. Okay. Like my hmm. brother-in-law. You, I mean, so heard... you want an alcoholic? Is what you? Want. No, I just want a guy that can <laughs> hold his own. Like you look look at uh, Tom Brady. The, there's all sorts of stories about how much you know how he could put him back. I mean, we or, saw or that how in he, the parade. Or how he could Clean. chug, you know, beers and things like that. Yeah, but did you? Yeah, yeah the rest would, of the story about how he would mix in water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because he was competing with 330-pound people. Right, <laughs> right. He was cheating. He was cheating. Well, he had to. A little foreshadowing. Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> Paul. What? He's not on the Patriots anymore. Oh I thought we could he say that. He might be on the Patriots. Yeah, he's coming back. Uh, Alex and Inglewood. Can we touch on that, too, later? Maybe. Yeah. Would you want that? No. no. Neither would I. Yeah. Nothing not against Brady. Either. But I just think, what, like, let's do that. We're going to do this. Let's just do it. We've yeah. moved on. Rebuild. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't. I we think touched he was, on it. Never mind. He was just kidding. He wouldn't come back. I no. kind of think it was more of that too. Yeah. But I, I heard them talking on your station. Which station is my station? <laughs> your boy, oh. with uh, Barthy and in, in uh, Cerrone, uh, and they were like legitimately like breaking it down. I'm like, are you guys serious? Ten games. Why would you want? Floor this? is ten games. Well, ten games. They're gonna win. I've heard well, the the oh well, big you, deal. You draft right. Drake May, and then he sits behind Brady for a year, and Brady you know tutors him and behind the scenes. And then Brady's not interested in tutoring anybody. And well, Brady's not interested in playing for the Patriots if you're using the third pick on a quarterback and not Marvin Harrison. I'm not disagreeing with it, that that's the logical way, but I got asked I was on uh, with the New England Football Journal guys last night on their podcast. Stoney? Stoney and, and uh, John and How'd you get on that show? They asked me to come on. Man, that it's a tough it's a get. Tough get. It's, <laughs> it's tough to get on that show. You're a know. bad person. They just, <laughs> what? They just asked me. I don't know. <laughs> They're so good. I know. I, I, I love, they I love work, those They guys. work so hard. I know. I know. And you're, them. And you're John, just like, Kevin, so how'd you get on that show? I, I know that I've known them a long time. They're great guys. Ke- Kevin asked me at the straight face if uh, if uh, Brady would come back and if I would want him back. Like they, it's an honest question that people have. I think people have entertained it. I was yeah. listening to Beetle and Phil Perry, and Beetle was making fun of Phil because he wouldn't entertain it last week, evidently, and it's still like. Uh, I, it was kind of nice that he did say the Patriots, though. That was nice. He, yeah, he threw that out there so everybody got Like, happy. it wasn't just, you know. Yeah, because the other guy was like. Raiders, Dolphins, you know, all the other yeah. teams he's been rumored Raiders, to. Raiders, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. and he put the Patriots on I the just horse. don't. Is, that, is the Raiders owner thi- ownership thing it's, gone through? It's not resolved. No, yeah. No. Mr. Kraft, if you're listening, give him a piece of this team. Let him be part owner of this team. He should not be affiliated with any other team besides this team. So that's. I'm asking. Well, I think. That's Part of the thing is like they will they're looking to give him a piece of the team for a fraction of what no, the, I know, the and piece that's is why. worth. No, no. Make it fair. It's make gotta it be fair. Make it fair. Of, of value, you know. Um, yeah, but I don't think that Tom is necessarily interested in, in other opportunities oh, okay. because I think not because of Vegas specifically, although that's part of it. I think Davis was giving him an unbelievable deal. Like he was getting like let's just just use round numbers, he's getting a billion dollars worth of the team for like a million. Like that's like how off it was, right? But in in this case, I would say to pump whatever the percentage is, here it is. You don't have to pay us; you own it. But if you ever want to cash in, here's the amount that we have to get back. You know, so like you can't just sell it and make the money. If you sell it, we get the money. You know, because we're not asking you to pay it's for like it. Like selling your house before it's you know paid for. Yeah, something like that. You know, but he he should be part. He should have equity in the Patriots. I think. If he's going to have equity in any Because I don't think he's got $300 million in cash lane. Maybe he does, but, you know, he's not. he doesn't want to outlay that mu- amount of money. I think that's probably a safe bet. Right. Um, Although he does have a contract worth 300 and something million from yeah. Fox. Yeah, I know, but over how many years? Ten, Ten years. years. Right. Um, so Alex and Inglewood, first off, I want to say I enjoy the show. Nothing gets rid of my morning anxiety like hearing Paul's voice, and I mean it. Wow. So, yeah, Inglewood. that's stunning. Uh, my so, question, at this point in the draft process, do you think the decision makers, Elliot Wolf and maybe Mayo, know who they want to take in the draft? I'm sure they have contingency plans for any scenario, but will they go off a big board or could it be a draft day situation where Elliot Wolf has Drake May no matter what written on a piece of paper? Uh, like the movie? Yeah. <laughs> Got it. I think they have a pretty good idea. They know who they want to take. They know who they And want. they have contingency plans. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to talk to him on Thursday. Maybe we can get it out of him. The Michael Penix. We don't well, want to know. Thursday, right? Yeah. Uh, the Michael Penix thing. Um, Why do you want to know? So what are you going to do with that? So I can know ahead of time. Yeah. Oh. 
We don't. We don't want to know. Why, wait, wait. What, why wouldn't? I mean, I understand like competitively and all that, but why wouldn't you personally want to know? First of all, because if they're telling me, then I question them. Oh, okay. So you it's know? just a competitive thing. Yeah, I, it's I, not that you don't want. Like if we were off the air, if we were off the air and like walked out of the studio and Gerard was right there and he said, "Oh, by the way, just so you guys know, we're taking Drake May." That wouldn't bother you. Yeah, it would. Oh, hmm. well, it wouldn't bother. Yeah, me. Yeah, I'd be like Gerard. Why are you even saying that? Because I, I know mean, you I mean, won't tell anybody, yeah. right? I know you've been here for thirty years. No, and I, I know, know you're loyal like, to the organization. Yeah, I, I just, I just, I know it's in the vault. I don't want that. Um, you don't want that pressure. Yeah. Plus, you don't know. I would th- love to know. Plus, you don't know that you've <laughs> taken Drake May because maybe the commanders take Drake May, so you don't know that. Mm-hmm. Maybe they've already talked to Washington and they all yeah. have it I, all I sorted just, out. I, Plus, it will spoil it for me. I, yeah, that, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm good with that. I don't want the I night spoiled. Yeah, I think the biggest it, for me, it's just from a work like content perspective, to have a leg up and knowing who they're going to take, so you have everything already ready to go. It's yeah, much easier. What else are we going to write? I don't think the 20 <laughs> minutes are going to kill you. I mean, you've written like exhaustive film. Right, I know, but I'm just saying, you know, one of the things about the draft that does give me anxiety is like, okay, they're on the clock. Like, you know, there's 17 million names they could take anybody, and then all of a sudden we yeah. see the name, and then it's like the whole thing just come, kind of comes For 20 years, crashing. I've had that same feeling when we're doing our show. Then they pick someone, and I'm like, I, 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 there's I, a I million should, things should, to do. I should, be yep. ri- I should be writing. I should be doing this. I should be doing something. We should be talking. You know, we should be doing a – like, you'd never feel like it's, you're prepared. 100%. That's uh, why I'm just going to delegate. Speaking of not being prepared. Evan, you got to do this. Mike, uh, that. Rick in Dallas writes in, since it's the offseason, I'm sure you are all, all sick of constantly talking about Drake May and Jaden Daniels. I figured I'd ask a fun question. Fun. Nice. My favorite draft moment in recent history was Evan's classic reaction to the Cole Strange pick. The way he transitioned perfectly from bewildered rage to barely held together professionalism should be taught at journalism school. Thank you. So what is everyone's best, worst, most confused draft moment from the past five to ten years and why? Doesn't even have to be a Patriots pick. Best, worst, most confused. Well, I'll go first because my worst is on right out there on the Internet for everybody to see. So that would be Cole Strange, 2022. Yeah, I think, Terrible. I think the day that – Andy and I got into the argument about rivers and tides. Was oh, that probably, was that was great. Yeah, uh, for me it's Mac. Yeah, I didn't want Mac. I didn't think they were going to take Mac. Then they took him, yeah. and I'm like, it, like the reality set in was like I work for the team, and they just took a guy that I really don't think is very right. Good. So now I'm in and a tough like, position. And he plays quarterback. Yeah. So I figured that was going to make my life difficult. That that's the. Si- how I feel about JJ, I feel like, and maybe why part of the reason why I'm so anti JJ is because if they take him and then I had like, I'm not spinning it. And like, we don't no, want right. to be, you but know, the, but, that's said, but that, that said, I think in your breakdown, you did breakdowns of all the quarterbacks, but your breakdown of McCarthy was even handed. Thank I don't you. think you were overly negative or anything like that. Not the JJ people didn't feel that way. No. no. And, and I would just say Thank like, you. don't mistake me saying like I work for the team. So that means I have to change my opinion on it. No, I never changed my opinion on Mac based on anything I saw. Right. Now, what I was thinking was it's going to be hard to embrace this until he plays. Like, and I don't really feel like I did, but w- once once training camp came, he now I, I said he was the better of the two guys. Mm-hmm. You know, when we were yep. doing the show as we were watching, he was better than Cam yep. in training camp. And I said, as long as they're at, at, at worst, they're even. Yeah. And as long as that's the case, why wouldn't you play the rookie? Right. You know? But that's sort of stuck in my head. Like, yeah. I don't really believe in this guy, and he's the quarterback. It's hard to fake that. I think the last – the Mac lesson that I, I learned from that perspective is just to trust your gut because I was not a big Mac guy going into the draft, honestly. I, I had him as – the fifth quarterback in the draft, clearly, I thought he was like an NFL starter was his ceiling. You know, just an average run-of-the-mill NFL starter. They draft him, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm I bought it. Like, I thought, all right, this guy's going to be, you know, they see something. I, Bill sees something that I don't. Yeah. Like, it's Bill Belichick making the pick. Like, you yeah. have to think if he's going to invest a first-round pick in a quarterback who's getting – drafted from the school that his best friend is, you know, the coach at, they must know something about Mac that I don't know. And so I I took the cheese. Yep. So my my probably my favorite draft moment for us was and you'll remember this Paul, old timer, back in 
97 when they traded Drew Bledsoe, and we were allowed to break the news hey. on day two of the draft. Yeah, that was 2002. Oh, I mean 2002. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 97. 2002. Um, when yeah, we, that, was, yeah. that was big for us. Yeah. Um, that's, a good, that's a good memory. Um, yeah, we did. Just like Fred said, we, we, uh, we broke that news. Yeah. People were pissed. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. People were pissed. Yeah. Oh, they're leaking stuff on their own website. Uh, it's yeah. not fair. Oh, oh. Yeah. No, yeah. literally, Patriots.com broke that news. Interesting. That Bledsoe is going to be traded. We traded. never broke another story <laughs> again. Yeah. I, uh, I have no good stories to report from the draft since I've been here. I would say last year was no. good. No. I loved last year. I mean, it was the first I time mean, that I, I did the draft party and was, you know, here for to yeah. work here for that and then they picked the guy i wanted so it's I, hard like i would go to the the ones that we hit like um ty warren was one that we had um chandler jones was one that we had brandon merriweather was one that we had so when they when they took guys that we were saying what we were mocking to the patriots and i know everybody says that no one ever gets them right like no sometimes you get them right sometimes yeah. you, you, you you do and those are the ones that stand out for me as more positive. Yeah. I will never forget when Cole Strange was picked. That room was probably one of the most uncomfortable rooms I've been in. Like, yeah. you could hear a pen drop in there. Yeah. One, when they traded back, everyone booed. But then two, when they picked him, it was crazy, especially because I think someone called and was like... It was disbelief. If they pick so-and-so, like, I'm jumping off a bridge. I think that was the same draft party. I was like, this is... And, you know, poor Cole Strange. You know, he's the... He's like the example of the overreach uh, in mm -hmm. recent years for the Patriots. And it's not his fault, you know. But, like, man, was that an overreach. Yeah. Frankly, the whole draft. Yeah. That whole class is they, bad. They, dra they overdrafted every single player in that draft by, like, a round or two. Yeah. Cole yeah. Strange, Tyquan. Uh, I think Marcus Jones is probably the only guy. Mm -hmm. who, and he's the best player. And that was the only pick that I liked. Yeah, me and, too. And the thing about it, well, you know, I think other than yeah. Bill – it's all the same people here. So, like, it'd be really interesting with, the, you know, the truth serum. Yeah. Like, whose picks were those? They were all Bill. You know? Well. I think it was a lot of Bill, 95% Bill, and then I think Matt Grill I still the believe the Cole guy. Strange See, pick is because of his ties to Tennessee, Bill. He wanted to, ha he wanted <laughs> oh to be able God. to say, so I'm from Tennessee. I was born in Tennessee, and I, I picked a, t a Tennessee player Okay, in the but first round. why not pick one from, like, Tennessee. You, yeah, like Tennessee, like in the SEC, the yeah. not a school that I even, I'm Googling. Even, give, give me a Memphis. <laughs> he probably met the head coach at one time at Chattanooga, and he really complimented Bill up and down, and he wanted to give him like, a solid. Like well, Matt Rule? you can give him a solid by having him come in as an undrafted free agent, but not as your first-round pick. Yeah, I, I, I think that Bill has the final say, but I do think that the whole collaborative part, like they're putting like boards together, and Bill's the one that's – identifying i don't think that they had cole strange as a fifth round pick everybody else in that room and yeah. bill just went ro rogue and said eh, yeah we're going to take him in the first round yeah i think they thought higher of him than everybody else yeah, yeah. i believe that i think that they probably had like a second round grade at that point in the draft 28 is probably going to be a guy that you you graded out as a second rounder because you don't yeah you have maybe 15 to 18 first round grades that, uh, in a good draft class so i can believe that they probably thought cole strange was with that pick but it was just the combination of the position he plays and the fact that they reached on a, on a guard in the first round was just a, a very bad combination a uh, little draft scenario game uh would you rather there's three scenarios the first one would you rather take may 80 mitchell and then patrick paul that's your first group the hmm. second group is Jaden daniels tyler guyton and xavier Leggett. Oof. And the third group is Marvin Harrison, Bo Nix, and Max Melton. The second one. Okay, the only one I would have no interest in is C. I, I don't know how Max Melton got in there. Good player. A, a was, was good, uh, but something about B, that mixture of the – I mean, the quarterback obviously is great, but the tackle and the wide receiver, I really like Xavier a lot. And yeah. also just be able to get a good tackle is awesome. I would take either of the first two, but is Patrick Paul uh, – I assume that he's going round one, round two, round three. Is that a little – That's what I thought. Like th third round for him? A little earlier or late. I don't know which way. Late? Uh, a little bit just because I think uh, – you know, because of the tackle premium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I think that he's probably a third-round graded player. Oh, okay. But I don't, I don't know good, if – Good groups then. I don't know if he'll be there just because tackles are tackles. You know, mm. it, you're going to – you're going to see a lot of tackles going in the 20s in this draft. You know, you're going to have Alt, 
uh, Fugawa, fa- uh, I would say Fashionu probably still. And then you're going to see a lot of tackles, you know, the Guitons, the Mimses, those guys are going to all go in the 20s. And so then day two becomes Kingsley Siumatia, Patrick Pollock. These guys are going to fall, you know, fly off the board. because the Kingsley guy is the one that's Penisul's cousin? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Ta- really, really talented. Uh, Floyd in Michigan writes in, for all those fans who want to trade back and we will figure out the QB <laughs> position down the road, please pay attention to the Minnesota Vikings. In their negotiations with the Patriots and the Vikings, they have been embarrassing themselves. They come across as a desperate team that grossly underestimated the cost to move up into the top four to draft a quarterback. I don't care how bad a team is, when you have an opportunity to draft a possible franchise quarterback, you draft them. Plus, bad teams pick at the top of the draft and pick quarterbacks all the time. What has Minnesota done? I don't know. Like how would they embarrass them themselves? Well, Jeremy Fowler had a report over the weekend, which I don't know if this is what he's getting at, but I have to imagine it is. The Vikings are trying to make this trade without including twenty three. They want they don't want to they don't want to trade both ones to move. Oh, up. so how's well like, how's that embarrassing? I don't. I have no idea. But that's yeah. the the latest report is that they acquired twenty three to hopefully still trade up from 11 to get the quarterback and then also take a, a non-quarterback yeah. at 23. Yeah, I mean, they're obviously trying for a pie-in-the-sky situation. I don't think there's anything embarrassing about trying to give less to make a move. Mm-hmm. I think the embarrassing thing would be, well, it's worth X and Y, but we're going to give you X, Y, Z uh, in, in everything else in the future. That's embarrassing. That's being desperate. Overpaying. And overpaying. I, like That, to me, would be mm-hmm. what you don't want to do. Yeah. Trying to get away with paying less, to me, is smart they also have uh, it's not going to work but it's smart quezzy their general manager is one of these analytics guys and uh his math is a little bit different for, in terms of the trade chart than everybody else's and he uh doesn't put as much value in picks like he thinks picks are not worth as much well the trade the do. trade charts too like and i understand like a lot of people have said that like they're not going to get what they want because if you look 11 and 23 well the emailer that emailed in just now, he's right. Like when you have the quarterback, yeah, then there's, that's a premium. There's that's a tax. not the. It's not yeah. just the X on the spreadsheet. It's different, right? There's a. This is a basically a three quarterback draft, and this is the third spot, right? So that costs more yep. than just what it says on the trade chart. Yeah, absolutely, Mike and Brockton. If reasons why a quarterback fails is an important thing to consider, how can you draft one third overall with the uncertainties and deficiencies on this team? The offensive line is unproven, regardless of if you draft a left tackle. There's no go-to receiver. We have no idea if this offensive coaching group is capable of developing talent or calling plays productively. Why not give it one year to see what your support system actually is so you can identify your deficiencies properly and fix them before bringing in a quarterback who may shoulder the blame for things that aren't his fault? Where these quarterbacks are a crapshoot, why not take the crapshoot Next year. Yeah, see, I'm not big on the crapshoot thing. You keep saying that you can't guarantee who will be available at quarterback next year, but it's the same non guarantee this year's class being good. Right, so why is it better to wait till next year? Yeah. You take just one defeated year, your own argument. Take one year to enhance your roster and system and staff so when you do draft a quarterback, he has the support necessary to succeed. I understand where he's coming from. I don't like it's not like he's he's totally wrong or anything like that. I would just say, you know, Will Anderson was up at the podium during OTAs the other day. And he said that people were coming up to him at the pro bowl and asking him to get him to get them to Houston to play with Stroud and to play with D'Amico Ryans. Does anybody want to play on the Texans before they drafted CJ Stroud? (laughs) <laughs> like, no. like, did I, like were the Texans a destination or a team mm-hmm. that people no. looked at and as a Super Bowl? His argument is basically, that, you know, like you're right. It's not, a, you know, it's not wrong. It's, you know, build the team before you get the quarterback. But I just, I don't really understand. If you don't get the quarterback, it's not really going to matter. You know, with very few exceptions. I think yeah. San Francisco was an outlier. Mm-hmm. It mat- it's, 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 it's mattered for San Francisco because they're that good. Yeah. I don't think there are a lot of teams like that. Yeah, I think the Texans, the only thing the Texans have offensively is Laramie Tunzel. Like, Tunzel was there before Stroud was there. Yeah. and that, in, But maybe the Patriots look at Mike Onwenu and say he's a blue-chip offensive lineman, mm-hmm. too. You I know, feel like I the know. Lions are another good example of they built their team. Obviously, they didn't draft the quarterback. Well, they got they drafted before yeah. they got all those players. Yeah. But then they built around him and got him everything I, he needed. I, I think there's no... There's no way. There's no way to do right. it. Like, yeah. 
if you are a team that has a lot of holes, you start chipping away at those holes. And when the best player is available for a certain hole, you take him, whether he's a quarterback, yeah. a wide receiver, or whatever. You know, yeah, like my, my like, draft thing. Like, like, no, let me just finish. Like, Go ahead. you know, people say, oh, you can't draft a quarterback until you have people to throw to. Well, I've also heard people say you can't draft a receiver until you have a quarterback to throw to him. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and like, both of those things are probably accurate. But but you have to get somebody. Right. You know, so like if the receiver comes first or the quarterback comes first, just take the best guy and then you'll fill in the you'll fill in the holes. Like mm-hmm. I, I, there's no set way of one has to come before the other. You start building your team. It's a process and when an opportunity's there, you you take it and you know, you you start filling in the holes after that. Yeah, and what I hate, like, the, the draft thing, the whole crapshoot thing, it's the quarterbacks, I, I just feel like there's busts at a lot of positions. And, I just, you know, so what, what, what if, if our, for argument's sake, okay, we're not going to take the quarterback because it's too risky. What if they take Marvin Harrison and he turns out to be the worst wide receiver you've ever seen? Roy Williams. <laughs> or Justin Blackman. Or Kevin White, top ten receivers who missed. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. What if that happens? Are you in better shape because it wasn't a quarterback? Right. No, we're screwed. We had the three. We had the third overall pick and got nothing out of it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I just I, don't understand I mean, why we're eliminating the crapshoot part of it by not taking a quarterback. No, you're not. I mean, he wasn't as high, but Nikhil Harry hurt this franchise by missing on that first round pick. That hurt us. You know. Yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah, yeah, it did. There's no, there's no argument. And he wasn't that. even the third overall. Right. Just think about it, how much worse it would be if you miss on the third pick. Yeah. Um, let's see. This is Emery. Uh, he says, "I agree with Paul that beyond Michigan and Ohio State, the Big Ten doesn't have many oppressive teams. However, like the this. Big Ten does have defenses that are much better than ACC. Mm-hmm. McCarthy has faced seven top twenty scoring defenses in the Big Ten." Because over. none of those teams can play in the past, and they can't <laughs> score. It, Iowa it, is in the Big Ten championship over the past, two and they years. can't score ten points. While May has faced two in the ACC, not to mention facing the number one ranked Michigan defense in practice. Also, and JJ like, might have had ah. a coaching staff cheating and looking up people's plays. Well, and whatnot, so. but, but like <laughs> in all that. seriousness, like, <laughs> I'm not a huge ACC guy. I don't think the ACC is great. No, okay, it's, it's not. not. But. I'm sorry if I look at North Carolina having to play Clemson and Florida State every year as being comparable to anybody in the Big Ten having to play Ohio State. And or even NC State this past year yeah. was, was. But I'm not even counting too. them. Like, I, yeah. to me, that's like Wisconsin. But in that's the, just, in the Big Ten. Like, well, none of those teams can score. Um, but that's just Big Iowa Ten football. good this year. Yeah, yeah. 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 Iowa yeah. is in the Big Ten championship because of the way the Big Ten is split, <laughs> and they yeah. could not <laughs> score ten. Points in a game, right? That's just mm-hmm. how the games in the Big Ten are played. It's thirteen to ten. It's old school by football. nature. It's old school yeah. smash. My, it's not great defense. It's just bad offense. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So he goes on to say, uh, McCarthy's QBR is higher than May's QBR in those games where he played uh, better defenses. He says, "I'm in favor of drafting May at three purely because of the traits, but their level of defensive competition wasn't similar." You know, so do you know how we say like in the NFL that the teams, you know, the teams that are in those divisions that have bad offenses have inflated stats? Mm. Yeah. Well, that's in a league where there's only 32 teams and everybody plays the same teams. Mm -hmm. Do you imagine how much more out of whack it is in the Big Ten as opposed to playing a team that has a pulse? Well, like, so he (laughs) goes down, you know, like, (laughs) like, like. If I, Megan, I if Megan was here, I'd even go in, you know, double battles. I mean, like you play a Northwestern. No, when was no, the last time Northwestern could score? No, so, but, no, but here's a, here's kind of a, Iowa, to make your point. Illinois, he goes down. Minnesota, none of those teams can move the ball and score. Mm. You know, since 20, Maryland, since 2022, Nebraska, he lists Rutgers. like the better defense that McCarthy's played. Iowa, which yeah. was second. And I'm telling you, what would happen to Iowa if they played in the SEC? I know. I'm that's what I'm making your point. Now, Penn State was 10th at the time. Illinois was number one in 2022. Nebraska, 13th. Penn State, third in 23. Ohio State, okay, they were good. Ohio State's good. And then Iowa again in 23. So, like, Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, uh, you know, they're not that good. Those, in defenses. Yeah. I know what their numbers say. Their numbers are incredible because they play against a bunch of teams like them that can't go from here to there without falling down. Yeah. <laughs> 
love this is that what take. you were looking for? I love this take. Is that what you were looking because, for? Because you know, I, you I used to feel this way. Uh, you know, the Pac-12 has gotten a lot better. The Pac-12 had a really good year last yeah, year. Yeah, but the Pac-12 was ironically always, they in the don't last exist. year of its existence. Uh, the Pac-12 I mean, has been like this for me, so where like everybody in the Pac-12 is slow. And so you have like a guy like Nikhil Harry who can reverse field in the Pac-12. If Nikhil Harry tried to reverse field in the SEC, he would have he would have been tackled for like a ten yard loss. And that's right? why <laughs> Michigan and Ohio State have separated themselves from the rest of that conference because they, they speed. the rest of it still can't move. Yeah, they got athletes and well, they can now. That's compete. how I feel about the Big Twelve. Like all of them can score a ton of offense. Like it's like a basketball score, but then none of them can play defense. Like why is the score like? 72 to 51 it's why just, it's just the way that the, those teams are built you know they're so, they're recruiting their coaching is all on the offensive side of the ball it's a great it's a great example i'm glad you brought up the big 12 so what happened two years ago everybody talks about the national championship this year for michigan two years ago they played a thoroughly average tcu team Max out of Duggan. out of the big 12 mm-hmm. and gave up 50 <laughs> in the semifinals and how did jj mccarthy do in that game oh he threw a couple of pick sixes like, this great defense couldn't slow down TCU that night with, say it again, Max Duggan. Who, by the way, was a tr- terrific college quarterback. Undrafted free agent. In the is NFL. nowhere near the caliber of players yeah. that we're talking and, about and, with, with yeah. even J.J. McCarthy. And Stonehands, and, Quentin and, Johnson. <laughs> Stonehands. Yeah. You hate Quentin Johnson. And I, w- I would say, you like, can't catch a cold. <laughs> was it this year that we saw, like, Texas play Alabama tight? Texas Ke- beat Alabama. Yeah. yeah. Beat Alabama. Like, I feel like their offenses can play – well, now Texas is going to the SEC, but their offenses can play in the SEC. That's because right. they have Steve Sarkeesian, who's right. the best. But but if you had – <laughs> like the Big the 12 best. offenses that are good offenses year in and year out, mm-hmm. if they played in the Big 10, they would score just the same. Oh, yeah. It's not just because the Big 12 can't play defense, which is true, <laughs> but it, it would look a lot different if Illinois was playing against Texas, oh, yeah. Oklahoma, Kansas State even, <laughs> you know yeah. – Back in not not now, but West Virginia about mm-hmm. five years mm-hmm. ago, yeah. Like those Big Twelve offenses can can score, and TCU is a good offense too. Yeah. Um, if they were playing those teams instead of Illinois and Nebraska and Northwestern, they wouldn't be ranked number two in, in the in the country in, in defense. No disrespect to Megan, but no, but I'll take it. Northwestern. Sure I can't her. <laughs> the, the, the game that Wait, go, the, the, it's like when the Andy game. Hager puts the glasses on when she does the Northwestern thing. <laughs> the, the game or like the the one that's like what's his best film. For JJ McCarthy is against Michigan State, who was oh, an God. absolute train wreck They're this so past bad. year. And every single time you go through a Big Ten offensive player and you say, "Oh, where was his best game?" It was against Michigan, Michigan State. State. <laughs> Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, all of these guys all had went off against Michigan well, State. Good because they should, right? Yeah, they, their best game should be against the worst pl- team. Terrible. You know, uh, Dylan writes in from Augusta, Maine. Uh, thinking about McCarthy, what I can't get past when people argue he wasn't asked to do much in college is wouldn't he be asked to do more if he had the ability? I can't imagine Harbaugh would hold him back if hmm. he truly had elite abilities. I'm That's def- what scares me about I'm going to defend McCarthy a little bit on that. Okay. Like if you're in college and you're Jim Harbaugh, you do what you do to, to give you the best chance to go 27-1. and one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, I wouldn't have asked him to say, you know, I – I'm going to try to help your draft stock here. I'm going to, we're going to throw it all over the yard. No, I mean, Harbaugh was under fire, right? Before he finally started beating Ohio State. Yeah. With mm-hmm. Cade McNamara, by the way. Um, he was under fire, and he had to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't think that he should have, you know, yeah. I don't think that's necessarily an indictment on McCarthy that they played that way. The TCU game is kind of an indictment on McCarthy, though. But he was, but in his defense, he put up a bunch of classic he, numbers he, in the second half. He was like twenty, and he was like, a, I think he was a true sophomore. Like he, he was young. But yeah, you know, that was the one game where you had to put up points. Like I they think had, the Alabama game started the same way, and he got bailed out. So that yeah. was the one game where they couldn't use the extra scouting that they got oh. to win that game. Ooh. Very good. Oh. I like this angle as well. Just pile it all. So on. that's why he would make sense for the Patriots. <laughs> oh my! Knows how, knows how to decipher information. The Big Ten stinks. He was, they were sign stealing. He knew knew the plays ahead of time. I like this. I think so. I, I thought you were ready to like argue with me on my Big Ten. No, it's I, really been I, it's been bubbling under the surface because I like Drake May. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think there's a huge difference in those two conferences. I think, I think I, high I end more. Michigan and Ohio State are better than anybody in the. ACC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they should get rid of all these stupid conferences and have one super conference. It's coming, Fred. The top 50 teams, and it's like soccer in Europe where 
You, you can be relegated, relegated out. out if out of the top Northwestern, 50. you're gone. Right. <laughs> well, because of NIL and all the TV deals and stuff like that, I think that's something that it, they're going to have to reconfigure college football. That's, that's coming. Yeah, where it's going to be. There's a reckoning coming. There's going to all the top teams are going to just play each other, and it's not going to be by conference, and you're not going to have Michigan beating you know yeah. Nebraska all, all these, by fifty. All these conference fat cats in in their suits. Too bad you're out. You're out because they're making boatloads of money off, you know, running the Big Ten and all that stuff. You're out. One one super conference. I it's coming. Top I think fifty it is teams. Coming. That'd be cool, huh? Mm-hmm. And football's driving the boat, Chief. Yep. And basketball's going to end up having to follow suit. It's going to ruin that tournament. You watch. Oh yeah. yeah. The like tournament this in. year was wild. Why do you think? Think so? You think basketball would do? Basketball thing? wants more of um, the power teams, the money teams in the tournament, and they want to push out the little guys that get automatic bids. Yeah. I personally look at it not just because I'm a Northeastern guy. Before you, I'll take your little punchline away from you. Yeah. Um, I think that the little guys are what make the tournament. Oh yeah, like I Oakland. Think the, fir- the first, the first round or two, like when Oakland beats Kentucky, yeah, that's what people that remember lit. about this. Yeah, you know, I, all due respect to UConn, people will remember no, I know. those upsets but in the first six, round before, long after, people remember that. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, UConn six, beat Purdue. Sixty-four that teams make that tournament. Like, how many of the money teams are getting shafted? There's a handful. Are there? Yeah, there's a handful. Not a lot. Yeah. But they want all of their teams that are quote unquote good in the tournament because they put so much money into it. Yeah. And that's how the. Uh, that's how enjoy the NIT. But let's face it; like those are the teams. <laughs> Those those programs like are the Providence. ones that feed yeah, the right. whole. Oh yeah, the Providence should have been in. Well, yeah. Seton Hall, St. John's, um, Indiana State is not a big time mm-hmm. plane, but th- they probably should have been in too. Larry Bird went there, so it is big time. Um, <laughs> those those teams they want everybody in. Like if you went eighteen and fifteen, they want you. They want that team in the tournament. Yeah. All right, uh, Paul's Foods here, but before we uh, take a break, suns out, funs out, and guns out. Uh, So get ready for warmer weather with the latest in-stock and ready-to-ship outdoor styles from Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop everything from weather-resistant wicker seating and barbecue-ready bar and dining sets to on-trend indoor-outdoor rugs, umbrellas, and decor. Stop in and shop now to embrace springtime at Bob's Discount Furniture, the official furniture store of the New England Patriots. We'll be right back. United Healthcare knows when it comes to your health, everything matters. Every checkup, sit up, and spit up. Every back tweak and knee creak. Having clarity and choice. Having a voice. Helping keep costs small and feeling supported through it all. Everything matters. And that's why United Healthcare is committed to providing simple, accessible care from someone you know will be there. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Learn more at uhc.com. The New England Revolution are back on the pitch. And this season, you can be in the stands to experience it all live. Score great seats for every match from Ticketmaster, the official ticketing partner of the New England Revolution, and you won't miss a single epic moment. And rest assured, if your plans change, Ticketmaster has you covered. You can securely sell your seats to other fans with just a few taps. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com revolution. The New England Revolution Soccer Post Game Show is brought to you by the Dan O'Brien Auto Group. Come into any Dan O'Brien Auto Group store today and get your awesome protection plan, keeping it awesome. And we are back with another edition of the PU Halftime Show, joined by Chris Cassidy. I'm Matisse Bauman. And Chris, it has been a while. Yeah, it's been I a while I think people have been happy being like, they're gone. We're not gone. We're no, just we're taking, back. We were taking a little sabbatical. <laughs> it's been a little crazy. <laughs> a little break. It's been crazy here. All right, question one. I think you're going to get a T-shirt, but we'll see. I don't know what they're sending out these days. <laughs> question one. How many touchdowns did Matt Castle throw as a New England Patriot? All right? His whole career as a Patriot. Question two. Before Billy Cundiff's missed tie- game time field goal attempt in the 2011 AFC Championship game, the Patriots stopped the Ravens on a potential touchdown to Lee Evans. Which Patriots defensive back broke up the potential game winning touchdown? All right, yeah, you have no idea about that one. 
And question three. This is a layup for some. How many passing yards did Tom Brady have in Super Bowl 52? All right. So, Chris. Hold on. Yeah? I had a Matt Castle jersey when I was little. I begged my parents to get me a Matt Castle jersey for my birthday one year. Because how? Because you year, were like, what, I was on the Castle train <laughs> when Brady was in that starting role, and he went down. I was like, might have been the only – nine-year-old who asked for a Matt Castle jersey. Do you still have it? <laughs> I mean, if I do, I would never wear it. Definitely not. <laughs> bring it, anymore, bring so. it to the studio. But <laughs> all right, Chris, we're going to get into this. We got football movies. You know, I'm going to ease back into the halftime show stuff here. So what are your favorite football movies? Let's do your top three. Top three. We can rattle off some uh, yeah, we'll some, rat- some special ones, though, do, okay. outside of our top three. We'll do three. your top three, and then I'll do my top right, three. That sounds good. So my top three, I mean, this is just all like all time – even out of the category of football movies, just one of my favorite movies of all time. Remember the Titans? Yep. Um, you know, that whole movie, what it stands for, it really brings everything together, whether it's football, whether it's, you know, just everything, the whole storyline. It's amazing. Um, the way they show those players and their uh, sort of how they interact with each other, it's very interesting and it teaches you about history and it also teaches you just about the game of football in general classic disney yeah and i met coach boone there you go he talked to my team one year it was pretty cool All right. to listen to him talk so. love that a legend of the game what else you got so my other two um i would put friday night lights at two all right uh i mean booby miles another love great it. story yep um of course if not a spoiler but came down to the wire in that in that championship game yep. but actually i think isn't that that's a Based on a true story, isn't oh, yeah. it? Yeah, so it's, I guess people know this story. Anyway. Ernie Adams has a tie to that, by the way. He went on Julian's oh, podcast. Know. He knew the writer. The writer went to school with him, and he said he was going to write about football in Pennsylvania. And Ernie Adams was like, no, you should go to Texas. Damn, that's got to say. Oh, yeah. Go on, cool. like, what else you got? Uh, three is Gridiron Gang. Love Another it. great one. Um, I know we talked about it earlier, but first of all, one of The Rock's best movies. Yep. Uh, just that, That's right role. before he became – or like the rock. Yeah, the he rock. was still Dwayne Johnson. He still had some hair yeah. on his head. Yeah, and his <laughs> arms weren't like crazy blown out of his shirts. All like, right. All right. Is that, that, that's yeah, it? I, I had a little more of a description, but. Oh, no, 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 go no, for no, it. no, no, no. You want to go? Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. All right, give so me, I'm going to respond to that. First of all, I love Friday Night Lights. I like the show more than yeah. the movie. I haven't seen the show. The show. You should get on that, by the way. Yeah. But those are some great choices. I'm going to. This is in no order, by the way. I think I have Gridiron Gang in my top three. And then I got Varsity Blues. Which you're showing my age here because you don't even know what that is. No. That's Paul Walker playing the quarterback. It has some Friday Night Live vibes. I'm, that's your homework. Varsity Blues. Varsity Blues. Morel, can you was believe that, this? Was, He's never seen Varsity Blues. <laughs> it's was crazy. That, was that like 1992? Was nah, that, that, was is, that, your, that, that was, was that? that was. Uh, let me check real quick. <laughs> yeah, <got> Chris. <laughs> oh. Okay, and then I'm throwing any given Sunday in there. I love. Have you seen that one? Uh, so that movie's very slow for me. Okay. I don't really like that movie. That, I, I watched the first hour and I shut it off cause I was like, I'm kind of tired. Of oh hour. my God. No, that's it has a great plot in like idea. Willie Beeman. Yeah. It's okay. all right. All right. So we, we, should we talk about some others that we didn't get in there? Yeah, go ahead. All right, we all are Marshall. Right. Oh, banger. <laughs> absolute banger. I mean that, first of all, that story is horrible. Horrible. So, so sad, but. Matthew McConaughey, oh my gosh, Matthew McConaughey in that movie is amazing. And just, again, it tells the whole story. Very Remember the Titans-esque, tells the whole story. You get it all there, and like you you kind of feel the emotions throughout the whole movie, and I love that. I yep. love every part of it. We got The Express. Have you seen that? Is that uh, Ernie Davis? Ernie Davis, yep. yes, yes, yes. So have you seen that one, though? Uh, so we had it on a CD when it came out. I don't fully remember everything about it, but also I just right. his story. Is this great, is another but, one yeah. I love, the replacements. Keanu <laughs> Reeves, Shane Fel. Have you not seen that either? No. Oh, Chris, no. you are killing me, brother. When was that one? <laughs> that's the uh, that's nineties too. That's no, that's two thousand. Two thousand on the dot. Dude, what do you want me to do about these? I want you to I, go back like, and do some homework. All right, what about what about this one? Isn't really focused on the field. Draft day. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. It is draft season. No, 100%. It's a good movie. Yeah. I mean, if you're somebody that needs to learn the ins and outs of how a GM functions during draft time, that's a great movie to watch. All right. But 
I just think it's silly. With uh, all right, I'm list, plot a little bit. I'm list three more for you. I hope you've seen them. Okay. Longest Yard, the Adam Sandler version. Long, longest Yard, Adam Sandler version is one of the best. Okay. Burt Reynolds. Have you Rest seen the, the original? Burt Reynolds. But the original's okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I prefer the Adam Sandler one. I think Invincible. Mark Wahlberg. That movie's overrated. Okay. Uh, but you've seen it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've seen it. And then The Water Boy. Was that 06? Invincible? Yeah, Invincible was 06. And what about The Water Boy? Water Boy is also legendary. Oh. Although that's more. Is that less about football, or is that more the Water Boy about just Adam Sandler? That's being just hilarious. Adam Sandler being Adam Sandler. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right, Chris, we had some good good stuff here. You have some homework because you gotta watch some of these damn movies. I'm probably not gonna watch Varsity Blues or, or Replacements. Uh, I, I hate to hear that. They might talk about that unfiltered, actually. But, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but well, guys, maybe. thanks for tuning in. Um, send your answers in the web radio patriots.com, and uh, let's get back to the show. United Healthcare knows when it comes to your health, everything matters. Every checkup, sit up, and spit up. Every back tweak and knee creak. Having clarity and choice. Having a voice. Helping keep costs small and feeling supported through it all. Everything matters. And that's why United Healthcare is committed to providing simple, accessible care from someone you know will be there. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Learn more at uhc.com. The New England Revolution are back on the pitch. And this season, you can be in the stands to experience it all live. Score great seats for every match from Ticketmaster, the official ticketing partner of the New England Revolution, and you won't miss a single epic moment. And rest assured, if your plans change, Ticketmaster has you covered. You can securely sell your seats to other fans with just a few taps. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com revolution. The New England Revolution Soccer Post Game Show is brought to you by the Dan O'Brien Auto Group. Come into any Dan O'Brien Auto Group store today and get your awesome protection plan, keeping it awesome. Revolution! United Healthcare knows when it comes to your health, Everything matters. Every checkup, sit up, and spit up. Every back tweak and knee creak. Having clarity and choice. Having a voice. Helping keep costs small and feeling supported through it all. Everything matters. And that's why United Healthcare is committed to providing simple, accessible care from someone you know will be there. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Learn more at uhc.com. The New England Revolution are back on the pitch. And this season, you can be in the stands to experience it all live. Score great seats for every match from Ticketmaster, the official ticketing partner of the New England Revolution, and you won't miss a single epic moment. And rest assured, if your plans change, Ticketmaster has you covered. You can securely sell your seats to other fans with just a few taps. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com revolution. The New England Revolution Soccer Post Game Show is brought to you by the Dan O'Brien Auto Group. Come into any Dan O'Brien Auto Group store today and get your awesome protection plan, keeping it awesome. Revolution! United Healthcare knows when it comes to your health, everything matters. Every checkup, sit up, and spit up. Every back tweak and knee creak. Having clarity and choice. Having a voice. Helping keep costs small and feeling supported through it all. Everything matters. And that's why United Healthcare is committed to providing simple, accessible care from someone you know will be there. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Learn more at uhc.com. The New England Revolution are back on the pitch. And this season, you can be in the stands to experience it all live. Score great seats for every match from Ticketmaster, the official ticketing partner of the New England Revolution, and you won't miss a single epic moment. And rest assured, if your plans change, Ticketmaster has you covered. You can securely sell your seats to other fans with just a few taps. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com revolution. The New England Revolution Soccer Post Game Show is brought to you by the Dan O'Brien Auto Group. Come into any Dan O'Brien Auto Group store today and get your awesome protection plan, keeping it awesome. Revolution! 
All right, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the New England Patriots. I feel like I should say more, but that's it. Bud Light, I could use a Bud Light. I still can't believe I thought it was Thursday today. You did. All day. I said, all right, it's one week away from the draft. All right, a um, little Tuesday trivia. You want to uh, partake? Yes, sir. How many touchdowns did Matt Castle throw as a Patriot? 22. Incorrect. 19. Incorrect. 27. 23. Oh, I was close. Uh, before yes. Billy Cundiff's missed game-tying field goal attempt in the 2011 AFC Championship game, the Patriots Sterling stopped. Moore. That's correct. <laughs> the Patriots stopped <laughs> the Ravens on a potential touchdown to Lee Evans. Which Patriots I, defensive back broke up that potential game-winning touchdown? I'm going to rephrase Sterling that Moore. question. Which uh, Ravens receiver dropped a pass in the end zone? That would be Lee Evans. Well, yeah. I, th- I wasn't sure if we were going to I was Lee Evans' say, side or the Sterling Moore Sterling side. Sterling Moore, and, you know, I figured it was at the time, I remember yeah. uh, Paul poo-pooing uh, how good a play that was for Sterling Moore. Well, because Laid hands, baby. Laid hands. Because right. it, yeah. it, it's, a, it's a drop. And if... <laughs> If Wes Welker or Randy Moss ever did that, yeah, they'd be destroyed. I actually saw that going around Twitter the the Welker play in 2011, and like I, again, the was it a drop? Was it a bad throw? It's like guys, it's been it's been over ten years. It's a drop. I think we can move on. Well, it's both. It's a drop. It wasn't a perfect throw, but it should have been it was caught. A bad throw that was that was could have could have been caught. Uh, how many passing yards did TB12 have in Super Bowl 52? 505. 505 is correct. I don't know which so one there you go. Was. The one they lost. No, I mean, when, <laughs> the answer tells me which one it is. <laughs> yeah. But, I, you know, like the 52, I, I have a hard time with those. I know. Like knowing which one. Which one is which. Yeah. When you watch that game, which I did watch it back one time, and like the, how wide open some of the Patriots receivers were in that game for a Super Bowl yeah. is wild. And there was a couple of like broken plays for like 50 yards. Yeah, like, like Chris Hogan, Dola down the sideline. Gronk, you know, Brandon Cooks before he got hurt obviously had a big catch. And the, these guys, there's nobody within 20 yards. Like I have no idea what the Eagles secondary was doing. So that I had day. to do. Um, Would the Patriots have won that game if Cooks didn't get hurt? Uh, that happened in the first half. I thought you were going to say Malcolm Butler. Which it's I hard to argue yes. that they would have won that game because of anything in addition they could have done offensively. Yeah, that's yeah. true. They didn't punt. Yeah. yeah. If Malcolm Butler plays easily, they win that game. Easily. Easily. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I had to do a uh, thing for Sailor on uh, TikTok. Yeah. Nice. I'm not sure if that ever got posted. I that saw it. Yeah, it? it came up on my feed. So um, we were doing like a quick bracket of the best postseason games. And – she had it on the bracket with the Super Bowls with the Roman numerals. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to need to do <laughs> yeah. I need to write the numbers out. I always have to do 36 and work upwards. Right. You know? yeah. But when you just look at it real quick and you're like, oh, that's 49. Okay. Seattle. Like, right. But it takes me a second to think about oh, which yeah. one it was. Yep. TikTok loves Paul and Evan. I think yeah. S- yeah. I think Seattle is the best one. That's my favorite Super Bowl. I think obviously the twenty eight to three story is is more Hollywood, you know, the comeback, but just two heavyweights in the middle of the ring for mm-hmm. four quarters. Yeah. Uh, two all time great rosters. Yep. Uh Barton Poland, I see Daniels as a Jalen Hurts type. Someone who you just want and need to maximize on the rookie contract and as Soon as they get paid, I don't know if they can lead your team without the surrounding cast. Hmm. I think you'd be wasting 20% of what makes him valuable dropping him into this offense. And he's talking about Daniels. Hmm. Uh, that's why I'm declaring myself, uh, take Drake May if he's there. If not, trade down. Okay. I, I mean, I, I get his Daniels take. I don't get the comparison to Hurts. There's some passing comparisons to Hurts. No, no, no. I he don't mean as a player. Like, he's sort of making this line of demarcation about you don't pay him. Like, well, they pay. They were, they were like 11 and 1. Yeah. So was he saying if you take away Hurts' surrounding Supporting cast? Yeah. Like, they're a good team. Yeah. Philadelphia has good players. Mm-hmm. And they went to the Super Bowl and had every chance to win it. And then the next year, they were well on their way to do that and they fell apart. Mm-hmm. At the end of the like, they were 10 and 1, right? Yeah. yeah. Finished Something 11 like and 6. Yeah. Like, is that because the supporting cast was not there? Like, I, that that's the only part that I didn't get. I uh, get the comparisons, <coughs> you know, obviously stylistically. Yeah. This this next email, I don't know what I feel about it. I, I might have to go on a rant about this one. Um, 
wanted to respond to the email. You let me know when you decide. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to respond. This is Longino from Jersey. I uh, want to respond to the emailer that wants to draft Daniels. Just want to say that I honestly believe we don't have the coaching staff that fits Daniels' play style. I would love a dynamic player like him, but I don't think he'll work in whatever system this is. I feel like May is the better choice and fits the profile we need for this organization. What's your end? My, my problem with that is if we have a coaching style that can't take the better player, then – I, I have a problem with our coaching staff. Well, maybe he's not the best. Maybe it's more closely, you know, it's sort of like, you know, the intangible stuff with McCarthy or the way, the record with McCarthy. I wouldn't say that that puts him above the tier two quarterbacks, but if you feel like it's close and then you have a guy that's got those intangibles, I think it's the same thing with the system where the system is like maybe the difference maker. Like if you, if you have a kind of split between Daniels and May. I, I guess if they're close, but if, if you're saying that, Daniels is going to be the better quarterback in the NFL, and because of our coaching staff in their system, he wouldn't be a fit in the Patriots. I got a big problem with that. You know. Well, yeah, I I understand what you're saying on the surface, but if you have an offense that you don't think Daniels would be a better player than May in, then change your offense. Oh, okay. I just don't know if it's that easy. Yeah. But like, so I, now I we got to get I, a new coaching staff. Like, why? I mean, because I would, you have a coaching staff that has a system that they want to put in. But I would say that Are when, in, by the way, when the Ravens picked Lamar Jackson and they decided to go with him, they had to change their whole offense. Exactly, because he's not the same but as they Flacco. Hired, but they, they hired, did it. They went but, out and hired a different guy. Yeah, they hired Greg Roman. Greg Roman, who is the the king of the right. mobile quarterback. Do you so. think it's that drastic between Daniels and May well, that I'm, you would have to hire a new staff? I'm just saying hypothetically. I know. But I'm asking, <clears throat> d does Daniels require, as the Patriots exist today, would he require different coaches to be successful? On the surface, I'd say yes, just because I think AVP wants to run a West Coast, Cleveland-style offense. Uh, tons of under center, tons of play action, uh, bombs away off of play action, you know, like vertical shots down the field off of that. But do I think that AVP... Do I think highly enough of AVP that he could maybe adjust it? Yeah, but he's not Greg Roman. Like, he's not, um, you know, a college coach that has the background like a Cliff Kingsbury that has a background in that type of offense. So it is different. Like, there, it is stylistically something that I have talked about a lot, that Drake May is the best fit for the traditional Alex Van Pelt offense. Does that mean that Alex Van Pelt can't morph it to fit Daniels? I uh, No, I mean, he's... A, He's a professional coach, so maybe he could. That's what I think. I mean, it's football, you know? Yeah, that's, but that's not true, though. Ah. You know, I mean, I understand your point on the surface, but if you have an offense that wants to do X and you don't think that that quarterback can do X, it doesn't make any sense. To, I want to do him. what's best for the quarterback. Right, which means changing the system. And I think the one thing that probably got him fired in Cleveland was Deshaun Watson. Right. He couldn't build the system around a no, quarterback that, like that. That is the thing that got him fired. And that's Jaden Daniels. He wanted Deshaun Watson under center, turning around with hard play action. And I heard Evan has used this phrase with Jaden Daniels. If you want to have him play like that, that's sort of taking away his superpower. Right? That's a mm, phrase yep. that you've used in the past. And I agree with it. If it doesn't you, mean yeah. that he can't do another offense, Alex Van Pelt. But I don't think that's the offense that he is really accustomed <coughs> to running. Like we're going to put – Jaden Daniels under center, and then we're going to hard play action, nine-step drop, bootleg. Then we're going to have him come off the bootleg, and we're going to have him throw it 50 yards down the field. Yeah. No, not not the quarterback for that. So in um, in Lamar Jackson's first year, he didn't have Greg Roman, right? I believe they got him I after think that, did. but they might have had him. I don't remember. I, think he was, I don't think he was the play caller yet. I think he was, like, on the staff. Yeah. But I, th I believe he was already in the building. I remember John Harbaugh getting a lot of credit for sort of scrapping his, his offense yeah. and, and sort of doing it differently with, you know, you know with a change. Yeah. But Yeah. No, it was, um, a it was a I think, a courageous move to, to take Lamar Jackson and just we're going to run an offense that's going to be best for our quarterback. And I think they've worked. Yeah, he was the tight ends coach. Yeah. On that team. Did the Eagles 17. have to do that? 17. They drafted Hurts? Lamar in 18. 18, he was assistant head coach, tight ends coach. Yeah. So so probably. A, well, I think. So he wasn't, but he wasn't the play caller until the next year. I right. think they did, but I don't think they really started using Hurts the right way until his second year. 
you know, they, like they they, def- Terrence's offense is notoriously one of the most watered down offenses in the league. Yeah. They put, they run like five different plays. Yeah. There's like three different types of read option style plays that they run with him. And then it's ISO shots to those two receivers and the tush push and, and short <laughs> six plays yeah. and the right. tush push. But in to, to that point, they did have a different coach come in. Yeah. Hmm. Right. His rookie year, it wasn't the same um, coordinator. Right? Yeah. Wasn't Steichen there? Yeah, Steichen's there. Yeah, that I mean I think that that's a big reason why they fell off last year was I think he left. I think Steichen might be the brain of that entire thing because they were very simplistic and they just found ways to dress it up differently pre snap to make you think it was something else when it wasn't. Uh, Florian writes in from Germany. Uh, assuming the Patriots take May or any other quarterback at three, how do you feel about taking wide receivers in round two and three? For example, Xavier Leggett and Tez Walker. Yeah, I don't like that. You don't doubling up. You don't want to do that. I don't mind doubling up, but not in two and three. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. too much or two. I think that it, it is a. If they decide to go receiver with thirty four, and then they wanted to take two tackles in rounds three and four, maybe they have two guys that are graded pretty similarly, and they both think could project the starters. So we're just going to hedge our bets and take two of them. And that double dip, I think makes sense. They've, which have done multiple times in the past. Right. And, or if you take the tackle in the second round and you wait till the third round, then I'm not necessarily minding if you go third and fourth with receivers. Yeah. But I think that you need to take three different positions with the first three picks. Uh, emailer writes in, he says, hello, we hello. host a podcast out of Colorado. We're looking for Patriots insiders that be interested in being a podcast guest next week to discuss the Patriots draft. Fred? Would anyone be interested? Paul will do it. That's Paul Fred. written Paul all Why it. is that Paul? Do, I'm not, uh, actually I'm not the be, one that did the, the big uh, podcast Yeah, I was going to say, week. Evan. Did, that was you. I actually have another one tomorrow, too. Oh, I did, I did some me. main radio station, too. I, that I yeah, 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 there are good people me, up there. Evan. Actually, the person that does these t- is Deuce. Well, you got to you gotta yeah, call. You gotta, it's got Deuce written on it. You got to call Deuce. No, in all seriousness, send us, you know, Forward that email, Fred, to me and make sure I get it. Oh, is that a web radio? Huh? Yeah, you, you got it. I respond to those people. I have a soft yeah. spot. <laughs> you not remember just, what not it's just like. in my belly. You want to reach oh back God. down. You're not a ladder puller. You keep the ladder down so others can reach your heights, right? Okay. Do you, do you respond <laughs> to the heights? Your heights. Heights is a strong word. Yeah, for from whatever Everett I've, to Everest, the Paul Perillo story. <laughs> whatever I I've can't. done. Yeah. Do you listen? Do you, do you respond to like the college kids? Oh, all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Paul does a whole school circuit in the Maybe off season I send him all to where you. he goes to like grade schools See, and high schools and talks to them. This is where he's really a bad guy. You know how many times Fred has, has said to me like separately, like, you know, it's really cool that you do that. And now he's on. Now we're on the radio and everybody's listening. Well, it's just like you make it a hardy this me. morning. You you knew that he was <coughs> he was right. You were making fun of him. You said you were mean. Well, that was different. He was making fun of a guy, Dennis, that yeah. I, I know Dennis. I know, but he was right. Uh, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so, so sometimes you, you you play a character. But, yeah, I do um, some some high school stuff, some yeah. college. I'm going to send them all to you. Not because it, I'm like No, no, no. That. You're not going to send them all to me. I just. Wait till you get the, I don't li- give wait till you get the library circuit. I did a couple of well, libraries. Um, Paul no. also <laughs> does, <laughs> Paul also does the awards banquet <laughs> circuit where he talks at awards. I don't do the I rubber chicken circuit. I did a couple circuit, libraries. No. Oh, I do the line. e-club. <laughs> I do. I, I've done the e-club a couple of times. Yeah. The e-club? That's Everett. Everett Club? That's my club. Is that a club of Everett? Is that a, um, it's like the athletic club. Yeah. Is I it hard to get into? Can uh, anyone join? Well, yeah, as long as you're a varsity athlete. Well, I mean, I think anybody. It's it's like a charity. It's, I don't know. You give scholarships for the current students. They don't know. They Wait, don't is, this they don't always is it like the yeah. Harvard club? They don't always <laughs> no. let my oh kind We don't come. Things. I, I did get a, um, a tie with the, the crest on it. Um, oh, yeah? E-club crest. Interesting. Oh, nice. I met someone from Everett High School. Friday, I had a panel, and Dr. Shirker, I think is his name, he played football and lacrosse there, and now he's an orthopedic surgeon. How old is he? Wow. I have no idea. But like he's roughly. It's probably after Paul's time. <laughs> uh, maybe 40? Yeah, because I don't even maybe think they have something? lacrosse. Yeah. Can't give, you can't give every guy sticks. Every kid's not It's hard. It's a weapon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Baseball bat isn't? <laughs> what? I went... I went. <laughs> No, a hockey stick isn't either, Fred. Oh it's God. a stupid Paul line. <laughs> why, are you, why, why are you killing me today? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, Paul likes to he, – he gives back to the kids. No, I don't know I, why I, I'm getting made fun of well. for this, but uh, what, what's, what's, I'll take it. Who's making fun of you? I, I try to as well, but I, I always feel like 
I, I don't want to, you know, you, not that I love my job, don't get me wrong, but you got to be honest too about, about certain things. Like one kid asked me like, what's the work-life balance like? I'm like, well, like during football season, it's not so good. It's not so great. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and tell because then you get into it and you don't, re- you know, you're thinking one thing and then it's a totally different thing. Do you ever thing. catch yourself trying to be so like deep, you know, like, you know, like, oh, so what are you interested in? Well, I, I just, I love sports. Yeah. But do you love to write? But do you so love it? So one but of do, the things. Do you, do, do you love to talk? Do you about really, it? really love it? So it's funny you talked about that because in my higher view or whatever it's called, they asked me what work-life balance looked like for me. I'm like, is this a trick question? Yeah. That, that question should never be asked to someone going for a job in pro sports. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're looking for work-life balance, go find another profession. Which is totally fine. Like, you know what you're signing up for. Yeah. yeah. It just, I, I, these kids should know that that's mm-hmm. what they're signing up right. for. Mm-hmm. You know what? These kids today, keep, they're different, Evan. Keep in mind they're different. that it's, it's like, uh, you know, working for a hospital. Like, there's no weekends. There's no off days. There's no holidays. Right. We've had games in recent years on Thanksgiving. That's exactly Christmas, what I said Christmas to Eve. Yeah. New Year's. You know, yep. like you just you, you figure never it know out when it when the game falls, you work. Yeah, um, you know, beats working for a living, but sure does. That's, that's it. So one of our listeners actually worked for PFF, and we've gone back and forth about their grading system. But uh, he's he's writing back in. If I apologize, can we stop talking about this? No. He, he says I was excited to hear the email read last week and uh, caused some discussion. Normally I listen to the podcast, but trying to get this on the show. A couple answers and reactions to the questions. Mike's question, he asked how I graded Vince Wilfork. Uh, I actually wasn't a grader. I was assigned to watching games and labeling each player at each position, defensive formations, offensive formations. This was entry level. It used to take me seven to eight hours per game. It was brutal and the hardest money I ever made. Two people did each game. They would compare each person's mapping for discrepancies. If you were 100% accurate, you made 100 bucks. Scaling down to zero if you were less than 90% accurate. I once got zero dollars for a Patriots Raiders game where the Raiders swapped out a guard in the third quarter that I didn't notice. <laughs> and this was the moment I knew I couldn't keep doing eight hours of rewatching per game. That's a funny story. I don't mean to laugh at you, but that's a funny story. I interviewed for one of their positions like that coming out of college, and it, I, I knew at the beginning that this was something that was not going to be worth it. Even for you? Yeah, it was because wow. it's like a hundred dollars a game, and it's just you're charting like, oh, he was the one technique, he was the zero, he was the five, he was this. It's it's tedious. Uh, he says overall agreement with Evan. Ultimately, I get I get not putting a hundred percent stake in the ratings, but what PFF tracks is ultimately a net positive in getting a pulse on who is playing well, and a lot of the metrics they track do provide insight. Not surprising that some NFL players are going to roll their eyes at some of the ratings. Holtby, that's the but guy. I can also Great say that when uh, I was there in 2011-12, there were a couple NFL scouting departments that worked directly with PFF on getting data from them. So the metrics were valued in the NFL as some departments preferred to use PFF to outsource some of those metrics and anal- analysis. Yeah, they all 32 teams now have uh, contracts with PFF. Is that right? The entire league. Well, now that bill is no longer. What do you mean coach. contracts with them? Uh, they like just they, subscribe? Or? No, no. They like work with them on, on the things that they're talking about. Because a lot of these tedious jobs, like if you can outsource it and free up people to do things that maybe are more important than mapping out, you know, alignments and stuff like that, that saves people time and they go do other things with that time. So uh, PFF, a lot of these places use a lot of this stuff. I, I couldn't agree more about the grades. The grades to me are like pass fail. If you look at them to like rank, you know, who's the best quarterback versus the second versus the third, you're probably not going to get that. But if a guy has, you know, a, a good grade and is grading out well in their system or a guy, a guy has got an F grade in the system that usually is pretty stable of this guy's had a good season, that guy's had a not so good season. Yeah, but I, I think where people roll their eyes is when they say so-and-so is the highest graded lineman. And you know by watching he's not. He shouldn't yeah. be. You yeah. Know? They, they have a tough time, I would say, with, with – Lineman in particular. Yeah, yeah. My problem isn't necessarily the evaluation per se. It's it's all percentages, and that's why I think, and it's not their fault that their numbers get interpreted, and in, and I I think in incorrect ways. Like this guy is the best cover corner in the league. He's played you know twenty percent of the snaps, so that means like he was successful on like you know mm-hmm. eighteen of his twenty plays. 
So he's ranked higher than Steph Gilmore the year he won defensive MVP. Like, that's the kind of stuff that I think gets in the mainstream. Yeah. And, again, that's not PFF's fault Yeah. that people don't understand how the numbers are arrived yeah. at. Yeah, I think that's why we're kind of on the same page. Like, when the Patriots are – when we turn the page to another game another week, I'll pull up their depth chart page that has like they're starting 11 on both sides of the ball and it will have the colors of like this guy's a good starter that guy's a bad starter whatever and just to get a feel of who's playing well who's not playing well you know what the lineups are like they're very good at that you know these are the five guys on the offensive line that are playing right now you know this guy's hurt so he's not in the lineup card you know that sort yep. of thing um <clears throat> jack writes in in response to paul's rant against the defenses <laughs> against which michigan has played Love i have that. only this to say Michigan 27, Alabama 20, and Michigan 34, Washington 13. Well, Washington's my defense case. wasn't all that great. Mm -mm. So that one. Washington's defense was terrible. Yeah. Uh, Alabama's defense forgot to cover Blake Corum on fourth down. Yeah. and Great throw, though. I, 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 think, <laughs> I think Alabama was uh, lucky to be in the playoffs. And well, yeah, they way. should not have been in the in the playoffs. I thought it should have been Georgia. And Emery says, I appreciate the discussion of Big Ten versus ACC, but the league disagrees with you. Over the last two drafts, there have been 10 ACC defenders taken in the first three rounds of the draft, four first, three second, three who, third. Who cares about the defenders? Uh, the Big Ten has had 24. S to your point, the offenses do contribute to defensive rankings, but there is also simply way more defensive talent in the Big Ten than the ACC. Over how many years is that? I don't know. I don't. I don't understand why we're limiting to just one side of the ball. Yeah. As a, an example of one conference, but I think those two conferences are very comparable. Mm -hmm. I think Ohio State and Michigan are better than Florida State and Clemson right now. Agreed. The rest of it, I think, is the same. Okay. I also think that it's you know you'd start to look at how many defensive players offensive players are drafted well when 20 of them are coming out of michigan and ohio state exactly then it's you know mm -hmm. it's a little bit different i'm not saying that as a like the acc has all this talent and i'm but. not even telling you that the big 10 isn't better i'm just saying they're comparable mm -hmm. we're talking about the big 10 it's like like it's the big 10 and the sec yeah it's not it's the sec and everybody else mm-hmm and really you should talk about the teams it's ohio state michigan alabama georgia you know, it's like ten teams. But I would even you. say in the in the SEC, give me Texas A and M, give me uh, Florida. You know, Florida. You know, more often than not, Tennessee. The last mm -hmm. few years, yeah. Like the the mediocre okay. team, Missouri was really good last oh, year. Oh yeah, they were. Yeah, um, they were. The mediocre teams in the SEC are far better than Kay. Penn State. Missouri's yeah. got some some prospects. Robinson, Ole Miss, <laughs> Ole Miss has had some high end talent. Uh, L from Wisconsin. Forget Matt Corral. Listening to Fred talk about the quarterbacks this year, it's clear that he has some unresolved trauma stemming from the Mac Jones pick. Probably true. <laughs> Shin up, Fred. All these guys are better than Mac Jones. Just look at the bright side. Uh, these, all four of these guys are absolutely better than Mac. Yes. More physically talented. For yes. Sure. And oh. I would throw Penix and make it five. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're well, all they're, they're all more, more talented. They have more than tools Mac Jones. in the tool More bag. athletic, better arms. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's saying something. All right, that's going to be it for this edition oh. of Patriots Unfiltered. Sad. We'll be back on Thursday. Thursday. Catch 22 Today's tomorrow. Today's not Thursday. Catch 22 tomorrow. What time? 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. All right. We will see you on Thursday. Thank you for downloading this podcast. Subscribe on Apple, Google Play, and everywhere else you listen. Like the show? Please rate and review us. Listener comments and ratings help keep us high in the podcast rankings so new listeners can find us. Be sure to check Patriots.com for more news and more podcasts. The world's original podcast.